Aloha, everybody. This is me, Lisa Trenton is Brown, and an entire group of amazing, beautiful light being souls, galactics, our star family, our light family, our soul family. Um, a lot of people, I think all of you are in the community, so community members that um, we have joined together today to create this um, beautiful, magical, amazing exchange where we are sharing uh, through light encodements um, information for everybody. Excitement, joy, happy magic, all the cool stuff that, that we come to live and, and reconnect with from deep inside as each person opens their heart fully, opens their mind, relaxes their energy, starts to learn to open up and play and enjoy and embrace the magic and, and the beauty and the gifts that we all are inside and start to bring this forth and share it with the rest of the world and every person that we connect with too. We're each going to share our experiences. Some of the joy, some of the crazy, some of the wacky, some of the, you know, this is about um, when we transition from an old earth reality to a new earth reality from inside of us, we start moving with our body from a linear reality to a nonlinear one, which eventually becomes completely quantum. But part of the process is breaking down all the linear perception of everything. And so we are to be nonlinear today. We are bringing our joy. We are jumping all in. Everybody's going to share however they want to. We, we, we talked about it earlier. We're not here to be, oh, hold on. Let me wait my turn polite. And, and we don't do that the linear way. You bring your excitement. You jump in. You share. So for those of you really nonlinear that this um, irritates you, good. For those of you that, that, that are all in the energy, exploring and playing, and this is about, oh, I didn't do the topic where nobody cares. Um, we started out calling this crystal creation, but then we realized that, that it's crystals, it's rocks, it's stones, it's sea glass, it's, it's the, the entire crystal kingdom. Um, it, it's elementals. It, it's on a multidimensional level. It, it's all energetic and, and it's what we feel. It's a connection and it's reconnecting to the crystal kingdom and through the crystal chambers of our heart. Um, to activate our crystalline grid inside of our body, which you will evolve into Christed consciousness as well. Um, each person here plays a part as a crystalline grid keeper, which is a part of grid keepers and gatekeepers and a lot of the service work that we do. That's one of the many, many, many things that for those of us who, who serve as gatekeepers and grid keepers, it's actually our priority. It, it, it's a very important part because gatekeepers and grid keepers, the ones who are conscious of what they're doing. Um, in the beginning, for a lot of us, we didn't know we were gatekeepers and grid keepers, or we heard the word, but we didn't really know what a gatekeeper and a grid keeper does. And technically, most everybody doesn't understand what a grid keeper does until you actually start doing it and the many facets of it. Um, it it's basically dedicating your entire life, self, body, and everything to, to higher consciousness, humanity, and anchoring the light codes, bringing forth the knowledge of, of higher consciousness existence for, for the evolution of humanity on a DNA level and with your body and the grids of your body and the templates of your body, the complete evolutionary process. And, and it's one of the greatest honors that we can hold. It, it can be very challenging when your body going through the upgrade process which a, a lot of the people on earth are going through right now. So this is going to be really important. So this is not a teaching event. Lisa has to be careful because she goes into <laughs> teaching all the time. So <laughs> without further ado, I am going to say thank you to all of you guys for joining to share the beauty, the magic, the fun, the, the, your beautiful kind of what spawned this whole thing was I saw you guys sharing your creations, the beauty and the magic. I went, oh my goodness, this is beautiful. People have to see what everybody's doing. It's like, okay, let's put something together. Natalie, you shared some of your beautiful, elegant um, creations in my sleep state one morning, working in all the dimensions, because we work in the multi-dimensions and the waking state too. Um, one of yours came to me 
and, and I was working with it consciously before, and I woke up, and I was like, okay, wait, we have to do something together. And, and then Esther, she's been doing the sea glass, and, and, and all, a lot of us, I think every one of us are working with the Daras in some capacity. Um, for everybody watching, don't get hung up on the specifics of anything. Okay, this is about getting out of your head about the whole thing. This is, this is connecting and feeling. This is about feeling. Opening your heart, you gotta feel it. You gotta be all in. You gotta get in there. You gotta get dirty. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> use, we call it coloring outside the lines. You gotta break out of those limits and conditions and barriers and all of those beliefs that you got. Throw them out the window. What speaks to you? What, what? Activates your light. Body. What what excites you? What gets those light cells moving? What opens your heart? What makes you cry at the beauty? What what makes you feel all fuzzy wuzzy? What makes you feel the magic and the bliss and the amazing stuff? Your linear head is not going to be the answers. <laughs> None of it. You got to be all in there and you got to feel. So, gotta let go of all that stuff. Bring the freedom. Bring it all from inside and, and radiate it out. So, what we're doing today is to help activate in, in a multitude of ways. Everything we do is an activation of higher heart consciousness. And then we move into higher mind consciousness. Once you learn how to live from your heart, then you get to move into source consciousness and conscious creating and all this kind of stuff. And then much higher mind consciousness, then you actually get to see how everything comes to be created as far as all realities. And you get to take a very active role in, in, in consciously recreating your entire reality from scratch. It's beautiful, but we have to start somewhere and it's by getting out of our heads. So we're just going to be quiet. I don't know. <laughs> we are going to who has today we're going to share a story of the crazy wacky stuff we've done through the years we're going to share the excitement we're going to share all that and we, we actually had a brief a brief eight hour conversation yesterday <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes turns into eight hours about all the fun stuff that we've done and it's important for us to bring in, this is all about creativity. Create, 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 create. Explore, explore, explore. Let go. Take your camera. For me, it's taking pictures. So, you know, for, through the years, my universe was like, get your camera out, take 400 pictures. When you get home and go through them, you're going to start seeing things you couldn't see. And it actually starts opening up access on a multidimensional level to other things. Um, it, it's a part of the process. Mine is visual creation. Would you guys start looking? Look at Esther. Yours is feeling, visual creation. Kim, Natalie, with Eve, all of us. When we're doing, what is it? It's a lot of people don't understand. A lot of this is visual, which activates and stimulates your senses, activates and stimulates and enhances your creativity. Activates and stimulates. One of the things when we start opening up to the fifth dimension, higher vibrational Earth new earth we use all these different words because they, they energetically they kind of mean different things but they all end up being the same thing in the long run is it's through beauty when your heart opens and you reconnect with gaia's consciousness but the beauty and the magic and the exploration and the playing and all of that and then there's other phases later with different light body phases but we're going to stick with that one for a little while we got we got to start there um Bringing our skills, bringing our gifts, bringing our own expression, bringing what we see through our heart visually of what's beautiful, what will open people's heart. It's all a part of the process here. And we can do it in every capacity, in every way, and each person will do it their own way, which is the beauty of the whole thing. So when you guys, we, we, we've set up, um, a, a page dedicated to each person's sharings. Um, each person um, that, that felt to do so is providing a free activation gift for you to download and have and utilize and activate through your own consciousness in whatever. Consciousness is hear, see, feel. Consciousness is 
uh, for me, it's, it's visual. It's a stimulation of all senses and, and stuff. So it's a whole experience and, and stuff. For other people, it's like, oh, I, my heart opens when I feel the vibration, which is going to be a part of the process. Um, learning to feel with your body and, and, and your energy and everything too. Connecting with the every, energy of everything. And, and so when you look at each person, creations when you look at each person's sharings you'll actually start to see the energy of where they create from you can see different expressions some do jewelry and, and you can see the beauty and the energy that they put into that and this is really starting to appreciate and see what everybody's putting into and sharing on a whole different way and and actually valuing this is a completely different value system valuing this is our light body this is our crystalline light body which becomes beyond important for all of us because it's actually what gives you access to the higher dimensional realms and awakens everything so you can have multidimensional experiences and anchor your new realities here and create and explore and experience on a multidimensional level from a multidimensional level inside because it's all inside, but everything is inside and you bring it out from inside in order to access that occurs in different ways. So this isn't a thinking, this is a being and a feeling and a doing from the being feeling place. And it's with the whole body. It's through your presence. It's through your divine essence. It's through your sharing. It's through your openness. It's through your own freedom, your free energy, the exchanges, very different reality than the old realities were. All right. I know that took me 10 more minutes to say. Like, so this is going to be quiet and who would like to share their wild, weird, wacky, awesome, mind blowing, simple, fun experience. Who wants to start? I'll go. Go for it. Sweet Lori. Hi everybody. I'm Lori. And Hi. I want to talk about my first experience with Andara's. Ah, and, um, I bought a, they were called Happy Wizard Magical Set. Yay! There were oh, I remember those. Hi! Those? Hi! <laughs> and along with the Andaras came a nice little um, sheet of instructions on how to connect with them. Um, putting them on your body, putting them in the sun, taking photos of them, um, just taking them everywhere with you, playing with them. So the first night I put them out, I put them out in the sun during the day and then I took them to bed with me and put them on my body, not knowing what to expect. And it was magical. I had this amazing, expanded, almost trippy kind of experience. Um, it was beautiful. It was absolutely so much love. And I've never been a person who has been sensitive to energy or so I thought, and this is gonna sound really bizarre, but they started communicating with me. They started talking to me and I didn't know what to think. And I got a little bit afraid. So I took them off my body and shoved them under my pillow and shut it down yep. and slept peacefully through the night got up in the morning and sometime during the morning I misplaced my blue one and I've never found it, but I missed it immensely. It, it was like a longing for it. It's so family. I did connect with them during the night, even though they were stuffed under my pillow. Um, and I loved them. I realized that I deeply, deeply loved them. As strange as that may sound, but um, I got hooked and I started buying more and more. And I was like, the, cra <laughs> the crazy cat lady, only it's the crazy crystal lady. And I had to take them everywhere I went. So I stuffed them in my bra. And the more I got, yeah. the more I was stuffing into my bra. So I thought I was going to have to buy a bigger bra to yeah. hold on my endorse. <laughs> My Moldavite, I lost them the other day. I <laughs> yeah. So, and then I would go out in public 
and I would see people I knew, and they would come up and hug me, and they <laughs> and they could feel, all they could feel were these rocks, these hard rocks, <laughs> and they'd back up and give me the strangest looks. Nobody ever said anything, but. <laughs> That brings a new connotation to the old phrase of rock and socks. <laughs> or over the over the shoulder boulder holder. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh, anyway. I love it. Yeah, it is so true though, isn't it? We do the wackiest, wildest thing. And, and we go ahead. I'm gonna be quiet. No, that's no, awesome. that's that's pretty much all I had to say other than um, Oh, that's beautiful. Even even my cats like them. It's cats love them. When when I'm yeah. sitting on the floor, like playing with them when I was making some of the, the photos for this project, and I couldn't even take the pictures because the cats kept coming in and flopping down right on top of the Andaras. Well, and, the, and, and I want to say this to you. Cats love in high energy. Mm -hmm. Any kind of high energy, they want to be right in the... When I used to do... Um, light body energy sessions with people on the table, the cats would jump on top of the people and, and right in the middle of all the crystals and, and it'd be like I had to get them out of the room. Cats are, represent the Lyran energy, Lyran energy too, mm -hmm. so just so you know. And, and when I started activating the energetic grids of New Earth, it was the Lyran, Lyran energy that, that brought the energy grids through, just so you know. Cool. Okay, so that's it for now. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, next, next wild wacky. We're just gonna go with wild and wacky for a while. Who I, I have a story. To share. Hi, sweetie. Hi, I, I have a story to share. So okay. I was one of those people who was like, "What crystals? What are you talking about? BS. Not listening to that." And. Somehow, I met a friend on a project that I was working on, and she and I connected, and she's like, I have a gift for you. And all the way from Texas to sunny California arrives this big white crystal. And I had it in my hand, and I was like, I don't want this. I, I don't want to play with this. I don't know what. <laughs> Wait, lost your sound, honey. Hold on. You moved your thing. Oh, there you oh, go. You're back. Okay. Go ahead. I don't want to play with Yeah, that's what our human <laughs> aspect. That's our linear ego. I don't want to. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so, so then I got that crystal and I kept looking at it for a couple of days. I'm like, I don't want this. I, I don't know what this is. Why did she send this to me? I put it back in the packet and I sent it all the way back to Texas. Okay. <laughs> and, and then and my friend is like, Oh, you know what? I'm glad you sent it back because I'm most missing my little baby. <laughs> and, and right around that time on Facebook, I found Lisa's writing shared on some other site. And I okay. read it and it was a direct hit. I was like, I got, I hooked on to it. I was like, I get what she's saying. And I went and explored her website and there I saw the Andaras. And then I saw this baby. <gasps> this one. Oh, that is magnificent. Yes. I, I remember her. That's from years ago, by the way. Yes. Yes. It That's was, it was yeah. from four, four years, five years ago. Okay. And I remember then, that one. But believe me, we know every one of them. <laughs> we don't forget any of them. Go ahead, sweetie. Yeah. So I see, I see that on your page, right? Like uh, with all the crystals, I, I, I see that. But do I buy it? No, no, no. Because I don't do crystals. I don't do andaras. <laughs> so I just shut the site down. But every single day for like a whole week, my brain kept going back there. My heart kept going. I kept your seeing heart. pink andara. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it. Yeah. I just bought it without thinking. And the moment it came home, I saw that little little thing with a sand in it, and your your uh, you know your currency, and, all the stuff and I sent, the, the fairy million dollars, yeah. Yes, <laughs> and so do I read the instructions you have written? No, I don't. I don't need instructions, right? I'm so smart. I don't need any instructions. I I toss it away, and then now I have this in my hand. I'm like I I'm looking at it. I'm like I don't know what to do with this. So anyways, I go to bed and I'm like, maybe I'll just put it on my heart. 
I was like, that that just seemed to be the right thing to do. And oh my God, I felt energy running through my whole body from here. And I just knew I I know exactly why this came to me. I, I felt like it came to me. I, it's not like I went and got it. It came to me. And after okay. that, I have like a whole box of Andaras. And I only do Andaras because I don't know. I didn't, I, I sent the crystal back and I was like, I'm only going to do Andaras. <laughs> so that's yeah. my story. That, that's, thank you. That's awesome. Well, and so it's just really important to understand that, that you threw the rules away. And you said, no, I'm going to do it my way. And it's through your own connection and, your, and what feels appropriate for you, which is an important part of this process. Throw the rules away. What do you feel? And, and to learn to trust that feeling. But the beauty is that each, we don't understand in the beginning, our human aspect doesn't. And when I say human, I'm talking about the ego. Everybody knows, knows me knows that. Um, not, not our divine new earth human, which is we're a hybrid of all of our species and all our DNA is evolved. And that's a very different aspect that is very pure. Um, but um, when, when our human aspect, we, threw, we have to throw all the rules out and be willing to trust and believe what we know inside, what we feel inside, because it's not going to make one ounce of logical sense. It's, it's actually right. going to be the opposite of everything we believe. When, our, when it's time for a crystalline, light body, our initial light body phase to activate one crystals of any kind. And I'm going to share something in a minute that, that when I share, um, it doesn't matter what we use. That's the point. We're supposed to use everything that, that works. We're supposed to surround ourselves with everything that, that elevates our consciousness, that assists us with expansion that helps us raise our vibration. Our linear human says, you know, this way or that way, or this is the right way, or this is the wrong way. And that's all duality and stuff. We have to move beyond all of that and what feels appropriate for us. Because when you get into activating your light body and your crystalline light body and your plasma light body and all these different versions of your light body on a DNA level, our DNA activating isn't a logical thing. Okay. And how we do that is through our heart opening and whatever opens your heart you know and I was saying yesterday if you walk out in the backyard which which we do when our heart starts to open we fall in love with a rock we will sit there and, <laughs> this rock. I love this rock <laughs> in that moment that rock is the only thing that matters it don't matter how much money for it it doesn't matter where it came from all of a sudden your heart just bursts wide open and you got love pure love innocent love lemurian love and and you know all the other different aspects arcturian the pure love that starts coming and flooding through you and you don't care <laughs> and and it's really allowing ourselves to get to that place and and when and and crystals and daras Hold on. Little dragon. Oh. Hold on. Oh, and now I'm going to show just for fun. The little dragon. I brought the little baby mermaid. This was gifted by oh. one of my, I, love that. I know you guys fell in love. This love is that. a gift from one of my retreat peeps that, that Eve last year went after the retreat. Some people sent me like heartfelt postcards and gifts and one of them sent me the baby mermaids and aren't they sweet? But, but how do you feel when you connect with the innocence and the sweetness of that? That energy is what matters. And so for me, has been my pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> it's pineapple. But the thing about it is, is there's, there's different, I know, nobody cares about the stupid pineapple. Lisa sleeps with the pineapple. The pineapple goes everywhere with her. And, and, you know, for, for months and months and months and months, I didn't know it's a part of the 12D template and it had to do with the royalty bloodlines that it had to do with clearing out all the entitlement energy. The pineapple's like really important. And, and linearly, that doesn't make one ounce of sense. It doesn't make any sense that I spent $36 on a shiny, glittery little pineapple and, <laughs> and that I carry this around everywhere I go. It's an activation of a consciousness has nothing to do with, with what any one of us think any of this is. Years ago, you know, I, I went through the purification, 
there are different levels of purity that we achieve inside of us. And it's a part of the purity template and purity consciousness. We have Lemurian consciousness. We have galactic consciousness. We have all these different levels of consciousness that we're activating all of the time. And every time we activate that level of consciousness, where it's located inside of our body, our DNA starts to rewrite itself. Well, we have so many different levels of consciousness that have to be activated through purity and love. Soul consciousness, which is activated through our light body, that, that whatever opens our heart is important. And so it's really throwing out all of the belief systems, throwing out all of the identities, throwing out Go ahead, Miss Esther, because she has a beautiful story to share, and then I'm gonna share some other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was it, talking talking about that. It's the the C class, which um, a lot that of people just consider that to be rubbish, you know. Um, and you know, you go go along the the beaches. I, I, I'm in Scotland, and go along the beaches, and there's people who collect it, but it's to put it in the trash, you know. They don't appreciate this at all and when I came across it um, I fell into it because I, I, I feel into energy and feel everything around me and um, the, the energy of a lot of the sea glass is so it's so pure you know even although it comes from bottles and um, different other everyday things you know it's it's the the feeling of the the ocean and the the elements and and all that that's churned it round and round and it's the the energy is just it's lovely to know so um, it's very soft it's yeah very, it, well it's, it's feminine so energy. yes it's Fine soft feminine. but it's very powerful as well yeah and it's very uplifting to you know not not every piece is the same they all have right. their own energetic signature mm -hmm. and feeling into that they're all different and all unique so they're they're like the andaras they're like everything um so it's lovely it's lovely working with it Yay! and the things that you create the beauty that you create and you take in and, and this is the thing is we don't understand in the beginning part of activating our new earth realities is is, is imagination yeah we have to basically just just imagining yeah. Um, opening up the lucid dream, all, all the yeah. weird, bizarre, and stuff like that, and all this stuff, it's all a part of the process. And, and a lot of this is taking that imagination and creating what, what doesn't adhere yeah. to, to Well, any... it's, it's very much a co-creation as well, because I, I don't pick up every part. Every, there, there are some pieces that to look at, they look beautiful but I pick them up and feel this one doesn't want to come with me so I have to put that back to the ocean um, and then others come and, and they want to be either jewellery or art or whatever I'm making and um, it, it's a, a real co-creation it's it's a be beautiful process it's very expansive. Well and with you when you say co-creation it's important to understand it's about a deep inner connection you're, yeah. you're actually really connected in that space. You're actually listening yeah. and you're open. Mm -hmm. and, and so this whole thing is about us reconnecting from yeah. that, from that place and being really present. Um, when you get into multidimensionality, everything that you understand ends up being a higher aspect of yourself. That the, and so all of these things become an aspect of you. You feel mm -hmm. them, you connect with them. You are them. They are you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's really no separation. And so when you say co-creation, when you come into union with them, the co-creation occurs inside. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm photographing these bits of glass. Oh, yeah. And, and people are looking with that nut over there. <laughs> what is she doing? Do you know? And it's like they, they come over sometimes and they say, what, what are you doing? So it's, a, it's a, a lovely opportunity to share it and to it maybe is, inspire yeah. others. To, to collect it and look at it and sort of well and one of the things like. I love at what you do it's simplicity everything yeah. you're doing is very it's simple beauty just like mm -hmm. you know Natalie hers it has this elegance mm -hmm. and everything she writes is just completely elegant and inspiring yours has the simple 
simplicity, which when, when our heart starts to open from purity, the divine child, everything is very simple. Everything is very pure. And, and so that simplicity comes through in the things you create. You take these, this and you create beauty through simplicity, mm -hmm. which is inspiring. So I love that about what you do. Is and, that and there's simplicity. <laughs> it's kind of like bringing everybody back to what's simple. Yeah, well, there's there's so many. I've got a, a, a crystal boy as well, Jack. And, yes, you um, do. <laughs> and some of his uh, friends at school as well, they see what I do and they say to their mums or dads, you know, let's go and collect sea glass. And, you know, Jack talks about me being the sea glass lady and I'm yeah. going at the school for, for being that. And yeah, he's this crazy woman that goes... Crazy, for that's, that's crazy people. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. we're all crazy. This is and the obsession. Do y'all notice that the obsession kicks in when you're crystalline energy? It's like, oh, I, this and this and this, and I have to have this. And, and we don't understand that obsession is an activation of a soul consciousness that's really important. So indulging those in obsessions from a very conscious place. It, it is actually an important activation because what may, what it means is that you're actually obsessed with your soul. Yeah. You're obsessed with the beauty, the magic, the amazingness. And so that obsession energy, we go from the old human obsession energy that was distorted and messed up and all, all confused and convoluted and wrapped around. And, and, and the obsession becomes the beauty, the light, the magic, yeah. the amazing. It grows, grows and grows and grows. And and it, yes, it does. Wow. That, you know, <laughs> I, I know us crazy obsessed people you know we, we're all whacked out we go to restaurants uh, uh, Julie I called her Julie's time she's Dara now but <laughs> she, she was sharing you know about taking hers to the restaurant I won't even tell it you tell it um yesterday I went and met a dear friend we went to a sushi restaurant to hang out we haven't seen each other in a while and three of my Andaras were, you know, they, they're like, these three wanted to come with me. So they were in my purse in a, a bin and the waiter who's we've known for years. And he came over and he's like, he brought us a, a big glass of water and with green and a big glass of water and orange. And then we had like a ginger ale cocktail thing. And the three glasses he set down were the exact color. That was the things that were in my purse. So I took them out. I was all like geeky. And I took them out and I was like, look, look, look. It's like orange matches and the green and the yellow. And it was just a fun. And he was like, he's like, oh, it was like just fun to like, he's like picked it up. And he's like, was this, this is the yellow one. He's like, I want this as a necklace. And he was like, oh, that'd be a little heavy. And it was just a very fun. It's fun because you get to activate other people. We, we, you, you all see us. Like we got the camera out. We got the food out. We're like creating. You, you got the andaras. You got the crystals. You get all of the baubles. I call them baubles, gems, baubles, because that's a mermaid thing. You got all this playful stuff out. You're sitting in the middle of a restaurant. It's like posing your meal, and it's like, oh, we're creating this beautiful. Thing. <laughs> It's like the crazy people, but it's so, and, and people are like, oh, what are you doing? And next thing you know, it's like, oh, I love that too. And that is infectious. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. And all of a sudden people let go of the linear constraints and they're like, oh, I want to play too. <laughs> I want to play. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I love that. Jul and Julie too, the cool part is when we all start understanding we're walking in a lucid dream in one capacity, then, then, then when, when you go into an experience and it turns into this magical thing, those magical experience, eventually that will be everybody's life. Every moment is magical because that's where we live from inside. We're the magic. We bring that energy forth. We live Bring me more magic, universe. More magic. More magic. I'm okay. Bring me the magical stuff. So I have a good, my most magical story with my Andara. Yeah, so please. these, I have many, many, fa they're all our favorites, right? Oh, but all. these two cool. are my like silver and gold favorites. So I, yes. I had had a few, but I wanted more. So one day I was like, I knew that I wanted, like I've been talking a lot with the gold ray and the silver ray. And so I found them for myself. I bought them online and I texted my husband. I was like, you just bought me a Christmas present. <laughs> He was all into it, but then so, um, but I then I like they were here, but he was like, okay, that's fine, but then you have to wait and open them. And I was like, 
was <laughs> going to tell they were in the house, but I couldn't open it. Anyway, I waited. So December 26th, it was a few days later. It was probably, because I have little kids, so it was probably when they had gone back to school. But I had this one. This is a gold kind of cute one. It was up in the windowsill. And mm -hmm. I have, I'm really lucky because I have a room, a room of my, her own, where it's a, my office slash crystal palace slash I do yoga yeah. and movement. And, um, I had it up in the windowsill and it's an east, southeast facing. And I was doing some stretching and moving around. And um, the light caught it just so. Like I've, a lot of my endars have become these portals or doorways where like magical creatures literally walk through. So this one, um, I was laying there and I looked up in this light beam. It like kind of caught me in the eye and it was like fully like a unicorn wow. quite literally like galloped through it and came into the room like fully light body. And I was like, okay, like, wow. It was very um, spectacular for sure. And then I had like somehow wear sense to like grab my phone or grab the camera. So I got a, a few pictures. Maybe that should be my activation photo of oh, the <laughs> The, um, the unicorn, like it's, it was like lit up and backlit and now it's been in there. And then I've seen, I have other pictures of this one too, where there's like this whole team of unicorns yeah. wow. that come and gallop out. So I have, I have several, I have one that, you know, dragons come through. I have one, this one, um, Sasquatch, like they, they literally like, and sometimes they change like who comes through which crystal, but well, they come yeah. and they like, they take light, they take form or they take light body form and like, move out from it's the crystal. part of the holographic access you, you yes actually thank you see everything holo i know i was letting you talk for a little while i remember going through all that that's at, that's actually where we live from it's that holographic reality that's part of the pineal gland that that happens when we start activating crystalline consciousness and our heart opens enough uh, is our pineal gland and, and stuff which is a part of what everybody goes through with all the head stuff neural pathways pineal gland and all that kind of stuff so so being able to see holographically um, for a while in the beginning, it's like, oh my goodness, it's a big deal because we didn't have access to that. And then all of a sudden, I woke up one day really, and I lived from the, that holographic, re I've been living from that holographic reality. That's why nobody understood me. I'm like, oh, I didn't have a clue because your whole life evolves and you don't really quite understand how different everything is until you actually... <laughs> So is we that part of how we, we can, when I buy new ones now, like I connect yeah. with them before I even see them in a picture or online, like you feel them, yeah. right? Or when, yeah. once you've actually purchased them, you feel yeah. them coming in the mail to you and they, they, they click well, in. Well, on a multidimensional level, they're actually, all of these, whether it be an Andara or a crystal or a meteorite, because a lot of us work with, you know, like for me, it's all the, the Moldavite, which I'll show you. My new babies. <laughs> my babies. But. <laughs> All of these things will be working with you as you activate where that is inside of you. You might on a consciousness level in a waking state not, not, might not be con completely aware. But multidimensional in your sleep state, they're going to be working with you. And, and so we're actually all, a lot of people, you know, I work with people, I show up in people's dream state. And they're like, Lacey, you were working with me all night long. I've been doing that for years and years and years. Um, the Andaras crystals will actually start in one capacity they're working with you the other capacity is activating in your crystalline grid and it's actually going on inside of you and your perception does that make sense it's a dna thing mm -hmm. and, and and so while one perception is that this is occurring on another level or perception that it's occur this is actually occurring but if you shift over here that's the part of diamond light code consciousness is that it's different perceptions based upon mentalities and vibration until we actually achieve the vibration with our body we don't get to have those experiences mm -hmm. so so as our heart opens our body is raising its vibration. It's releasing everything that's not the bliss, the magic, the amazing, the, and all these things, which is what everybody goes through and the human aspect doesn't enjoy all the clearing processes. But yes, you get to access all of this again. This is a returning to, to higher states of consciousness, which is where we all originated from to start with. We just forgot it all. We went deep asleep. We entered the veils of amnesia. All these words we use. It's a physical density thing. Though. It's an activation of consciousness, which is through love, which is through deep inner connection, which is through beauty, which is through visual, which is through energetic, which doesn't conform to anything linear. 
so so the fact that yes you they they talked to you they told you you connected with them you ordered them they got there and it's like don't let me i want to open my gift <laughs> it's like the child <laughs> going don't but please can I open it now it's that excitement which is <laughs> awesome cool thank you miss julie i'm gonna call you different names now. um all right who else I I know, you know, who was that uh, me lola Go, Miss Lola. What would you like so to share? I have this um, red under. And yeah, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> I know all of the ones yeah. you guys that, that you got for me. I know every one of those. <laughs> yeah, and I had a funny experience uh, a few months ago. Uh, I had been working with um, her and the set she was in for, I don't know, a year, a year and a half. And then uh, I felt like getting uh, another set. So when the other set arrived, uh, this set said that it's time to, for you to let us go. And uh, they just uh, chose a place in the house uh, on the windowsill and said, this is our new spot. Do not move us from here. We're enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> and one day, after I had been working with the other set, um, I felt like uh, moving the red one. And I, and I thought, well, I'm not going to move it. They said I shouldn't move them. So <laughs> 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 I respected their choice and didn't take them with me outside. And um, I did a, a grid activation. And nice. I was like, I was seeing the red one. And then I started regretting that I left it home. I mean, what am I going to do now? It's the centerpiece of my grid. <laughs> so <laughs> in that moment, when I realized it was the centerpiece, uh, I became uh, the under, I was in it. And then after um, I contracted down, it became my whole um, hip area. Like yep. it was this huge uh, piece and it was like, oh, so she doesn't need to move. <laughs> She's inside. <laughs> I too, when I, when I first started working with them, I, I went to sleep with one, which was a star seed um, one. It's, it's, it's actually going to be my free gift that I give. It's got a, a, it's got a Syrian light beam in it the, and, and stuff. So I have to find the original picture because it, it, you can actually see all the details. But activation is an understatement. But I, I remember laying one on, on my body and going to sleep. And I woke up in the middle of the night. And, and inside of me had turned to the, the, the blue aqua liquid. And, and it's a part of the crystalline structure of your body. It's a, a part of, it's a part of, because everything's a part of a whole. Everything's a part of a bigger picture. It's never that one activation, all of them for years and years and years and years. They're all a part of the bigger and I did the same thing, but in that moment, the words are, we are the, we are in Darian on this whole new, so Lola, as you're talking, then, then when, when we're talking about Indora specifically, we become Indorians and it's actually, and we haven't had the conversation in this video, but crystals serve a different purpose for the carbon based physical body. And for activating the light body, we're talking about the quartz crystals and how that comes into play. The Andaras serve a different purpose for a, for a purification process of the crystalline light body, which is a different template of our body. And so each one is important. It's not this or that. It's this and this and this and this and this and this and oh, not this one right now and, and oh, but this one right now and, and oh, but now this one and you're bebopping all over the place. And, you know, my Indars, every time I go out, they go everywhere. You know, they're in my car, they're in my pocket. <laughs> they're, I, my whole bed, and we're going to talk about grid in your bed. My whole house is a grid. Years ago, it was like grid the whole house. The whole house is a mega monster crystalline grid. But I didn't know at the time that's what I was doing. It's just I was listening to my universe, me, say, do this and do this and do this and do this. And then I woke up one day. What I started to understand was that it was able to sustain and maintain vibrationally by filling my whole place 
with the high vibration. Now people can't, most people can't stay in my house because the vibration is so high. Their nervous system, it's a nervous system overload because we don't understand the nervous system, the immune system. We don't understand the glands. We don't understand the cellular body and all of the DNA and all that kind of stuff and how our physical body works. But, you know, Kim and I, we were talking about this and gritting in, in the early days before I understood anything, my universe was like, get all your crystals out. Now, at first I had an adversity to crystals because whoever was talking early about the adversity or con, I call you all con. <laughs> the adversity <laughs> to crystals is an adversity to waking up. The yes. adversity, the adversity we have is our resistance which actually is a part of, of what creates our suffering reality is all that resistance yeah. is what creates our suffering and, and, and stuff like that because we have this entire matrix system inside of our body that has to literally evolve on a DNA level from, from the old 3D matrix and programs and everything that we held into a crystalline matrix. And then we get into other matrices and stuff like that. And the crystalline consciousness, the, the yeah. will evolve Christed consciousness, which is our ascended consciousness which is what opens up access and to creating new earth realities and living new earth and so it's it's an evolving through infinite levels and spaces of consciousnesses constantly and, and so it gets a little bit challenging in the beginning because we're bebopping all over the place it's like oh i want this. no and this one's talking to me no this one's not talking to me but it's really kind of being led around it's a part of the surrendering process that whatever excites you in that moment, whatever connects with you in that moment. When I go to bed each night, my thousand and Dara's, yes. my whole bed, all around my bed, all the windowsills, even here. Every windowsill, the whole house. And, and the thing about it is you're walking through a crystal kingdom. Yeah. The other night when I was taking my pictures for this and I had to wash all my crystal skulls and the whole family and it's like, okay, I got to get all this ready so I can take pictures for this. One, it took me two days to wash them all and, and then to set them all back up. And when I got them together and I started taking the pictures, it's like, I have recreated the crystal kingdom. This is a, an entire, the whole thing is magical, amazing. It's got the dragons, it's got the unicorns, it's got Atlantis, it's got Lemuria, it's got the galactic, and, and it's family. I mean, it, it really, you know, this brings back our reconnecting with each other here as family here, as star beings here, as crystal being here, as Christed being I have here. To, I, ha I have to say something funny. When you said you have all those crystals around you in your room and in your bed, you know what my husband tells me? He's like, you're cheating on me. You're cheating on me because you're sleeping with your andara. <laughs> well, and I have to share with you the same. My universe years ago, years ago when I opened my home up and I was putting a lot of people up at Soul Family and everything. And, and at one point I had three of us in my room. And so one of the girls that flew in, she was in, I have a California King bed and we learned, it doesn't matter. And we were all sleeping in the same beds and, and, and no funny stuff. Okay. But then I had the old twin, he was on an air mattress and you have all three of us. And because we have to learn how to live together, this has been a really important topic lately about learning together and live, live together in a cohesive manner, in a community through unity consciousness and support each other and care about each other and all this kind of stuff. Well, one day it's like, I woke up and it's like, get everybody out. Everybody, get them out of your bed, get them out of your room, you're done. Because the more we're in the same space together, the more everybody's being activated and elevating the consciousness. And so we actually have the capability to hold a higher state of consciousness and everybody in our reality gets to live that reality too. And it's actually a part of our service here and initiation processes and all these things we get into along the way. But at one point my universe was like, get them all out. Everybody clear. And the words were clear your bed for your partner. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, everybody's got to go. And, and, you know, got some different rooms and all that kind of stuff. And, and I moved everybody out of, out of my room. And the next thing you know, the Andaras came and, and, and I look up and they're all in my bed. And the words were, we're your partner. I went, and I just had to bust out laughing. I'm like, 
I had no, there is no logical linear of anything. Yeah. And, and the crystals became the partners. And it's like, you're sleeping with them. Oh, my bed is full of hundreds of them. We have California king beds in every room so that they can hold all the massive Indoras. When people come here, the first thing we do is walk around the house and gather the ones that speak to them. And we start filling the beds. Look at Eve. She knows she has her own room and it's filled with all the Indoras. And, and I was telling people Eve yesterday, you have this California king bed. You have Eve. You have Indoras, and Eve has this, <laughs> and the rest is massive Indoras. I'm like, don't cut yourself, don't kill yourself, don't, don't, you know. And we have to move them away from the edge of the beds. So don't, not, but it, it, it's hilarious because, and now we're gonna go into Kim and the conversation of gridding the beds. In my early days, my universe was like build a grid, and in my early days, before I understood anything. But I actually was going through, I'd already gone through ascension of my consciousness, but then you have physical body ascension that actually takes, you know, years. It, it, sometimes it's not an overnight process because it's a completely, as you hold the state of consciousness, your DNA rewrites. If you're not holding the state of consciousness, then your DNA is rewriting and your physical reality is going sideways on you and you don't understand. And, and so being able to hold the state of consciousness while your DNA rewrites in, in order to reconstruct your reality on a soul level, it is a part of um, the mastery process too. But in my early days, my universe was like, grid your bed. So I got all my quartz crystals. We were laughing about the quartz crystals and how it activates a light body and it triggers all your fears, all that uh, vibrational, it, it's vibrational discordance. It, it's a vibration that your body can't hold anymore. It's a clearing of immense programs held in the body on a cellular level and in the body templates and grids because you have templates and grids and all this kind of stuff. And so, so I went and got all my crystals, having no clue what I was doing. And I built this mass, I had a California king bed. And, and your bed becomes your heaven for a while, by the way. How, how many of you guys know that? You know, when, when, you're, when you're sleeping to wake up and you're clearing heavy duty veils and you're breaking down all, all of the, the stuff, you're sleeping and you're sleeping and you're sleeping and, and all of a sudden your, sleep, your bed becomes your crystal chamber, which there's a crystal chamber in, in your heart and stuff like that. So metaphorically, microcosm, macrocosm, you start to understand how all this stuff works. And I took all my crystals and I gridded under the bed and I built this massive crystal and then I crawled like Eve into the little section in the middle and I didn't want to mess the grid up. And I crawled up, you know, we look like idiots when we're doing this stuff. I crawled up next to this crystal and I had like this massive crystal with a line right down the middle of the bed. Yeah. And I crawled up next to it like this, and I laid there all night long. I didn't move, and I slept yeah. in the middle of this grid. And, and, and it's like, don't move the grid. <laughs> don't move the grid. Don't mess up my crystals. <laughs> and I'm sleeping in this thing, and my body is going, da, 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 da. <laughs> and I thought I was going to leave this planet. <laughs> my white body was like off the charts, just like. And it's, oh my God, I'm going to take off any minute. I didn't know I was building my light ship, my pod. I didn't know that I was building an actual chamber that has constructs. You have a Stargate system. You have all these things. Your Merkaba builds and constructs itself. Um, and it's through the light body, the crystalline light body, the different aspects. And you have a Stargate system and all these things. And they actually construct and build through, through con their, their consciousness constructs that are geometric and all this kind of stuff. And they actually are, I'm sharing new information. I'm not supposed to be teaching. Okay, so hold on. <laughs> yes. They I are the to... constructs of your entire reality though. And, and so they live and breathe consciousness. They're awake and alive and everything moves constantly and shifts inside and outside. And, and so when you gain holographic access to see again, you can actually watch it all change and move and everything that comes into your field affects the consciousness of your reality and the constructs of everything too. Understanding and being so in tune inside of your body and with your field and being completely responsible with what you're creating and allowing it is, and the amount of love and purity that you hold is what gives each person the capability to reconstruct everything and hold that here through geometrics. All right, I'm gonna quit talking.
All right. As you as you said that, Lisa, I was. Uh, <clears throat> it reminds me of co-sleeping with my little kids, like of, of like when you're in the bed and you're like. But then maybe that's why some of us call them like I'm not that big into the labels of them, but like the crystal children, because they're like they Rainbow are the crystal, crystal and they are the grid. And I have crystal grandbabies, and my little my I think he's eight year old. He's eight years old now, and, and he's complete grandma. And you know he's got his own collection. Yeah. And they see, and, and another reason why, you know, like Julie and Eve and some of you guys, um, Arcana, you've got children working with the kids with the crystals. They understand. They see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, oh they, yes. They, oh, yes. yeah. It's beautiful. I'm going to be quiet and let some of you share your experiences. Kim, you get to share some of yours. Who wants to go next? Sure, I will. Um I'll share my, my evolution with my crystals. Um, hold on, I gotta hold up my pineapple cup. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, it was, an, it was an accident. I'm like, which cup? Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, this is the first crystal that I ever met that, that mm. my husband dug. I up. have one like that. Do you? Mm -hmm. Well, he, he came home from Arkansas, he dug this up, he told me a little bit about it and said, you could program it. And I mean, this was years and years ago. And I just went, yeah, okay, right. <laughs> and I, I, it sat on the shelf for a few years. And then we started going to Arkansas, uh, where the crystal mines are in Jesseville. And my uh, in-laws bought property down there so we started going twice a year and Thank so you, universe. <laughs> oh my god all of a sudden it was my obsession we would go to the crystal mine the actual crystal mine so like when you said get dirty, get you, dirty talk about, you talk about fun the kids yeah. absolutely love it Yes. And you're filthy, but it's so fun yes. because, like, let me just show you, like, this little cluster, which oh, yeah. you know, I got thousands of these that I, we dug up. You just see, like, a little tiny piece sticking out, a little mm -hmm. glimmer, and you just start digging it up. And that red clay, Arkansas clay, is stuck down in all these little in between all the points. So um, I would take the whole rest of the summer to clean. I would sit outside. Working with, with the crystal. Oh my God. Yeah. Working with and loving, loving each and every my one. Crystals, all clearing. my love is in all of them. I, they're yeah. all so beautiful. Yep. And even on their property, I would see like a little piece because they were like near the vein. Um, I would just see a little piece and I would sit there and work for hours like an archaeologist. And I would, I would dig out, you know, this beautiful rock that had crystal points and formations on it. And it's it was, funny because as you're talking to me, I keep seeing that the word is rebonding, rebonding with them, reconnecting, but it's creating a bond. It, it, it's, it's being and all the work that we're doing, we're recreating and, and, and establishing those connections. You're, you're establishing the connections with, with your body when you're doing all these things. So, so as you keep talking, I keep seeing rebonding as far as a part of reconnecting. Does that make sense? Absolutely, because I, I feel it, and um, I got just so obsessed and crazy. Uh, we would bring home five-gallon, ten-gallon buckets full of crystals, and then w one time I talked my husband at the time into bringing this giant boulder <laughs> that had crystals on it, and we had uh, a conversion van, so we put it in the center of the van to drive, 12 hour drive, and the car broke down. <laughs> of course it did. And it was a tire, and then he was mad at me that I made him bring home this gigantic boulder. <laughs> and that went into my landscaping. Yeah. Um, I had lots of 
uh, pretty things in my landscaping. I would, I would create uh, designs with the crystals. Yeah, I had them all. created a garden. We did all the geomet geometry and you take the crystals and talk about things growing fast. Oh, oh yeah. Huge. We dug the whole thing out in a Merkaba. And we, and, and, wow. and, and, oh, stuff that would have taken months and months and months, that thing was grew within a matter of weeks, just blew up massive wow. when you start working with the geometrics and, and the crystals and stuff like that. It's really cool. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I didn't even know what I was doing at that time. We don't. Then I started taking classes. Then all of a sudden I got all my gifts within like a matter of weeks. It was just it's all, so it's important to understand yeah. classes are just awakening what we forgot. Oh, it's sure. Not, we're not taking classes. <laughs> we were laughing about certificates yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and stuff like that. <clears throat> but, you know, that is a part of when, we, when we're moving out of a linear and in, into a more nonlinear reality and vibrational. Vibrational, energetic, and all that kind of stuff is a part of the nonlinear. And at first, we can't hear, see, feel energetically. We can't hear, see, feel all of these right. ways. And so some of the linear practices are important to, to get us to connect and feel and, and engage and interact. But, but it's, they're just creating new practices so that we can shift out of the old ways and over to different ways. And so when we take courses and classes, we don't understand the importance of re-educating ourselves completely, but it's not, it's through being exposed to higher consciousness. It's not going to be the old way. And right. so when we take a class, all we're doing is opening up to learning something new. And our right. perception is that it's new. We don't right. understand it's all inside. All we're doing is trying to activate what we already yeah. know. Yeah. So, so like all my classes and courses are light encoded. They go straight to where that information, where you hold it. And for all of us, when we're starting to wake up, we start researching, we start taking classes, we start taking all this stuff because it's a part of, it feeds our energy body, it feeds our soul body, it feeds, it, it inspires and awakens that, those aspects that, that we shut down disconnected mm -hmm. from so i think it's important to say that because a lot of people don't understand the importance of of a complete re-education through higher consciousness is an awakening of right. where everything is inside of us on a dna level yeah and, it's a concept and it, it just keeps expanding Yay! and expanding and your heart more <laughs> I mean, I even got so obsessed with all these crystals and these little clusters uh, that I started making, I don't have one with me, but these plaques. Um, and I would glue down a cluster and then I would make like uh, a little fireplace or, you know, a little bowl with apples and like these little designs in there. And that would be all over my dining room table. <laughs> it's funny. You're reminding me of a lot of stuff I did in the beginning. I forgot about. Yeah. Too. I just remembered that just now that I, you know, I even have something in my car that I, I glued like uh, some points together, you know, yeah. and made, made like a flower. So I have it hanging in my car. Well, and I want to say this too, because you mentioned about reprogramming and stuff like that. We don't understand that we are crystals. Yeah. And so no. we can reprogram right. ourselves with any, any, so, so this is a part of clearing the old programs out and a part of crystalline consciousness is becoming reprogrammable. It, it, yeah. It's gaining the access to change the program we live in. It's gaining, oh. I know I have to say this because you, you. The light bulb, you, it's just like, it just all came together right there. Yeah. We, we can program, program ourselves because we yeah. are crystals. Perfect. Yeah. We are crystals and we can reprogram ourselves. That's why I have the reprogram program up and it's got crystals and Andaras in it and it gives words and people, you know, it, it's a starter program to get people to open up to understand. We run as humans, we run under programs. And we don't understand we run under programs and beliefs and mentalities and all the energy and the construct of all that is inside of ourselves. So as we open our heart up, we actually get to change the program. As we, we're, as we become crystals, crystalline and literal crystals in our body, your pineal gland turns into a massive, 
diamond crystal where, where you actually get to work through your whole body activates crystal, crystals all through the body. You can put your arm up in the sun and twist your arm around and it'll, it'll just, you know, when all the different rainbow colors and I gained the ability to actually see through my skin and I could see the geometrics, I could see all the different colors and then I could actually take pictures of it. Who would have thought our weird, bizarre realities that you can do those things? It's part of the x-ray consciousness that we get through the gamma light body too. But, but we are reprogrammable crystals. The more crystalline consciousness we hold, the more we can change the program of, of all of our reality completely. It's kind of cool. It's very so, cool. We think we're just programming a crystal. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's just our linear mind going, oh, I can program a crystal. And we don't look at ourselves as, well, I'm the crystal. I'm the crystal. And you, I mean, you guys know, like I posted that video, like you can see the, all the crystals on, on my skin, under my skin, and the glistening in the sun. And, I mean, it's it's proof right there. Going. So what do we do? Go doing, doing. <laughs> you know how much we don't really get until, you know, that's why I like coming here and sharing like this. It's like, duh. <laughs> One word just makes it all come together all of a sudden. And, like when and the beauty uh, is the more light you hold, the more you're able to program at will. Because you're yeah. programming, and, and I'm going to say it one way, but then, then we change it because it's going to be a different perception in a different way. There's not just one here. But the more light you hold, the more, basically all we have to do is hold our light. Our body reprograms itself. All we have to do is hold that higher state of consciousness. Our reality reprograms itself. Hmm. All we have to do is become Christed beings, which when I say all we have to do, it sounds simple. <laughs> I know, but if it's 24 hours a day, yeah. Yeah. complete dedication of ourselves and our whole life to evolving our consciousness and living from that highest place within ourselves and then learning how to share, connect, work together, live together, support each other, it's this whole, whole massive process, but we got to start somewhere. And yeah. And crystals yes. so so my things. evolution from yes, all yeah. these which i still have and i gave a lot away but i still have a lot so to, we will outgrow actual crystals when we hit a certain two andaras so this is my little set and i'm sure lisa recognizes Hi, <laughs> knows who they are this, this is my special set and then i added um one of my little generators with it and and then a, a cathedral that has a uh, lumerian yeah record keepers and, and which uh, we're yeah. the lumerian so so when you're sitting okay so kim when you're sitting there holding this lumerian yeah that, and basically you're the lumerian yeah. you might be holding the lumerian but vibrational match means you're the Lemurian. You, you, once you absorb, this is about absorbing consciousness. This is about absorbing on, on a human level. We're absorbing the energy of it, but eventually you won't even absorb in that way. But, but, but by you sitting there holding that you, you'll become that Lemurian consciousness and that crystal and you'll be the Lemurian. You'll be the star seat. Not really, but I'm making a point when I say this. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Eventually you put that one to a side and all of a sudden it, it doesn't offer anything else because you're it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess That's I still need it. <laughs> because it's, but, but, you know, we were talking yesterday about the, the fear coming up in the body, the, and the yeah. crystals and the, and the quartz crystals being amplifiers to activate the gamma light body. And the gamma light body is the light body that, that activates a, a lot of physical experience. Is, but it also is what activates our Merkaba and helps us move out of the third and the fourth dimension with our physical body. So, so first we have to activate the consciousness. 
the activation of the consciousness and where that little place is inside, then that light starts moving through the body and, and, look, and working to clear the fears and the programs. And, and, but it actually starts building the constructs of your new realities and it starts working with the grids, the muscles of your body. It starts working through the blood and the oxygen. And so the breathing, the entire body gets re built, reconstructed constantly with all new, with, with a whole new way of functioning. It works through everything that is impure and discordant and distorted and separated inside of us to clear it from our body because you have a whole body template that has to come online. And not just one template, you have, you have infinite templates and each one of them is activated. First, we have the consciousness. Then we have the deconstructing of the old and the reconstructing. We have the death rebirth cycles. We have all these cycles that occur. But, but yes, by sitting there holding that, you're becoming that. Now, some people can activate through, so like what well, I have the Andorra galleries up on my website for people to go look at the pictures. You don't mm -hmm. actually have to have it in your possession. It's a way to accelerate ridiculously mm -hmm. but but a lot of people you know when i started understanding years ago i just take my consciousness into that thing mm -hmm. and that is the activation then if i would like to to have that thing in my possession so that i can work more and more and more on a deeper level and stuff i could choose that but mm -hmm. just the pictures that's why you guys are offering you know with, with the, the, the things that you're sharing your sharing is the activation of where that consciousness is, the activation of that knowledge, that higher light intelligence, those light bodies, all of it. And, so can and, I pop can I I need a special group? Can I pop in with my son? My so I have a nine year old now, like nine, almost ten year old. And his first I was so excited to buy him Andaras. And he has some that he works with, but he had a small white one and a small green one and he put them in his hands and he was holding them for a while. And then he's like, okay, mama, now that hand has crystal power. And he's like, I don't really need to have crystals anymore. I can just, I can just hold one for a minute or I can touch one. Or I, he's like, no, nope, I've got the crystal power now. And now he's like, he's, they show us the way, you know? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. You'll know. Yeah. I, it, I, I refer back to my early phases because it's when I first started waking up when I, on, on one level. Cause we have a bazillion levels that we wake up through all along the way. But I'll never forget driving down the road and I was going to do an energy session to create portals in somebody's house. And, and, and while I'm driving there, my fingers started growing out lightsabers and I had all these, these things start shooting out of my hand. I'm trying to drive. And at that point, it's like, look at the time and actually slow time down. So you're doing all of these things and I'm trying to drive down the road and I got lightsabers shooting out. <laughs> yeah, and you're having these weird experiences and stuff. But yes, it is. We're the crystal transmitters. And the crystalline light body works very differently than, than the other light bodies do. And so uh, your, your crystalline light body will actually go offline. It won't work. Your physical body, you, you have to go to sleep for, for a lot of this. And, and um, your brain won't work. You, you'd be like mush. <laughs> Esther, yes. Uh, but your crystalline light body is very different because you're becoming a crystal processor. You're becoming a processor of light. Your body becomes a computer processor, a quantum computer eventually. And basically what happens is in order for you to process light encoded data, you have to shut down so your DNA can rewrite itself. So the crystals in your body can evolve and come online. Crystals, they'll shut off and then you'll feel really human. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And it's like, I have all this energy and it's like, oh, I got to go lay down right now. I can't think. Kim, yesterday I'm like, hey, you guys want to come in? Kim's like, I can't understand this. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it was like, hey, guys, I need you to send it. Kim's like, I don't understand anything right now. I knew it was simple. I just... <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, this is your crystal. This is your crystal body. Um, this is your crystalline consciousness. Your crystals in your body will actually go offline. And when you go offline, your physical body can't process light encoded data. And you're back to having a physical body that's trying to function. And when you're transitioning from a physical body to a light body and back and forth and back and forth, it becomes really challenging to learn how to function all over again. Because all of a sudden you've got crystals that shut off. In one moment, you're a transmitter. 
oh, I'm transmitting light. And it's like, oh no, too overwhelming. Oh, I'm a receiver and I don't want to receive. And you learn how to become a transmitter and a receiver and a generator of light. You, as you hold light, you become the light generator. As it, and it's held in the house in your cellular body. So I'm, I'm going to say this because most people, I don't say this out loud, but this will freak some people out. But sell you light. Everybody's body gets bigger. When, when our heart starts to open and we, our bodies start holding light and it starts working through our lymphatic system and we start putting on weight. But the thing about it is we, put, we get bigger while consciousness works through our body and reconstructs our entire body and how everything works together cohesively, the entire, all the systems of our body have to be reworked. The organs, the livers, the livers, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the kidneys, um, the glands, every part of our body, how our body functions completely gets reworked. It becomes the intelligence. Yes. It's more intelligent than we are on a human level. And the body, get in our bodies to a certain place where your light body can take over and do everything it needs to do and get you out of the way. A lot of the sleeping is a part of that process to get you out of the way. It will shut down because it's trying to do what it needs to do, what you agreed to do long before ever, in order to evolve into a star being. Yeah. Your DNA has got to completely be rewritten a bazillion times, 24 hours a day in order to evolve into these different levels of consciousness and bring forth the Lemurian, the pure Atlantean, the pure aspect and clearing all the distortions. Then your body's constantly on a cellular DNA level is working really hard in order for you to hold that consciousness and transmit that light. Anytime your body's going offline and what it's doing is it's taking you off grid from the old realities and systems yeah. and it's reconstructing everything according to new higher consciousness codes yes. and geometrics and all this kind of stuff. And in order to do that, it has to shut you down and get you out of the way because it actually works faster yeah. and clears all those timelines and multiple dimensions and all those things we talk about and use the words for while all this is going on. So while you're shut down and you can barely function and you're drooling and crawling <laughs> to the bathroom, <laughs> you're like, I can't, I can't move. I can't talk. I can't read email. I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. That's actually a really important place to be but your whole life's going to restructure according to higher consciousness too, which is very different. So I'm just saying that because <laughs> your brain won't work no. when, you, when, you're when you're moving from one dimension to another, all your memories go and, and it's a part of the Akashic records. And so there's all this stuff that starts to happen. The human memories go so that you can remember. Lisa, yes, I'm, I'm going through that since really? yesterday. Since yesterday, since we started doing this whole work together, I am not able to function. <laughs> and as you're saying this, I'm laughing because that's my story right now. <laughs> it's going to be this way for the rest of your lives. Yeah. That scares some people, but it's different. Each light body phase functions differently because they serve different purposes. So some people, the initial light body phase, when it kicks in, it's time to get your realities created and built start getting the work done. It, it puts you in a work mode of, of creating realities. And then when you get into crystalline, then, then your ability to work goes out the window and you can barely function all over again. In the beginning phase for starting to wake up, there's a lot of sleeping. And so the body can do DNA repair. So each phase, photonic light body functions very differently. And where your body funct from, functions from. So human body functions from a root chakra in the head. Where, with everything else closed off, if you will, and from everything being shut down and closed off. Whereas when you start cycling through the chakra system, cycling through like the different places of the body as a Kundalini awakens up your spine, spirit, soul energy, whatever you want to call it, it's all these different words. Um, the, the, each is Kundalini. There's many Kundalini awakenings. There isn't one. That, that you might have one that stands out as that was my kundalini away. Well, that was just the big one that, that you had a bazillion little ones all along the way. I, um, I have a funny story about that. It's, go for it. it's short, but when I started taking those classes and 
my my kundalini started awakening my butt tingled for like my, two months the numbness of your body waking up that's your body waking up by the way but it felt amazing it <laughs> felt like a butt massage for like two months <laughs> and i was like yes. what's this this is wonderful. <laughs> it also stimulates all the sexual stuff. And because a lot of people don't understand how sexual energy plays into birthing your realities and how your body impregnates itself. It's a whole different ball game here. Your yep. belly blows up in photonic yep. light and you're 10 months yep. pregnant. Yep. And, oh my God. And you got contract, literal contractions. One day I was writing on Facebook and I'm like, okay, we're going through contractions. Some lady sitting on, she says, I'm sitting on my front porch wondering, is she, does she, mean that really and then all of a sudden she's like oh my god yes she does <laughs> like and you're you're going through labor pains and birthing you're actually birthing your new earth realities when you're going through all this weird bizarre stuff and the sexual energy is what basically impregnates your body it's called immaculate consent. when i started going through all this weird bizarre stuff but it's also where your new realities and your creation energy and source creator energy are coming through you. And the sexual energy will clear out all the distortions of lack and need and, and all that kind of stuff and bring everybody into a, a very pure place, pure innocence and everything. So a lot of people don't even understand. I didn't understand until I actually went through it all. That's how you get your understanding. You actually have to go through it and experience it. And not one time, a million times. Because each time you go through it, you get a bigger part of the picture. Each time you go through it, you see it a little bit more. Each time you go through it, you're like, oh. Because our new reality is all geometric. It's all pieces and parts. Lola, I love that. Miss Natalie, I want to let you talk too. Um, so, so this is about all of our experiences. We might look at that one with a purpose, but we, we really have to look at our whole life to understand. Our whole life here has been this. We just didn't understand the roles they were playing. We didn't understand what was really going on. We didn't understand how it fit into the bigger picture. Once you gain access to the you have a bigger picture, which is your bigger picture. Then you have a much bigger picture, which is basically, it's called the, the, the grand plan. And you, you can see the much bigger picture for all of us. And while we're on this planet, while we chose to incarnate here, come here, birth here, walk in here, be in this place, whatever words you want to use, because they're all true and, and not true in another way. But, and I'm going to say this really quick, is that our photonic DNA it's how we, t in one capacity, it is part of the teleportation of our DNA from, from process and everything. So I'm just going to say that and then we'll, I'm not going into all that right now. But it's important because that's how your DNA as a galactic, your DNA is all these aspects and stuff awakens in your body and, and all and where all the memories come for. And we have to clear out all the distorted ones. So, all right, Miss Mark Arcana, yours. Yeah, I was I was going to say there were two things I wanted to say. One was um, when uh, Julie was talking about the children, both my boys would sleep right next to me. They are now 11 and 9. And until two years ago, that's how we slept every single night. And I felt like they were activating me because they both they are there. Yes. And my son, right, if the moment I put Andara's on him or he holds it, he's like, Mom, I feel like I'm getting dizzy. It's because yeah. he's vibrating at a really high rate because they can go so quickly high, right? Light the, consciousness the, does that. Yes. 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 And, Light and, consciousness, it throws us for a loop. It throws our balance off. We, we, we get yes. really dizzy. And, and, and that's a part of light consciousness activating in our body. And because it expanded so fast, it's like, yes. oh, I'm dizzy. But it's actually yes. our, our consciousness in our body, which is... And, and you say that now you've made me remember, I used to do that as a child, but we all thought there was something wrong because we, we want to, we, we have these linear perceptions of what's causing this and what's causing this. And we have to get out right. of all the mindsets because that's not the cause. That's not what you really think it is. It is something completely different mm -hmm. and, and stuff. So that's, yes. It, yeah. And, and because, 
because they are like already high by children just just holding the andara just for a little few seconds that gets it it awakens it's it, it an instant awakening yeah, yeah. I, and cool. that reminds me of uh, maybe Kim forgot what she had done for Halloween, but I ah, remember yeah. <laughs> because I, I, messaged, I messaged her separately because I was so moved and touched by what she did. She handed out crystals to all these children for Halloween and it brought tears to my eyes. I was like, that's such a beautiful thing to do. So I messaged her separately asking, oh, I would love to buy. And she was like, I'm going to move. So Kim, I'm so glad we are on this because I'm going to get in touch with you. Oh, okay. I want well, to share this story because that's important yes. too. It's at Halloween, you... she decided, yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Go, go, Kim. Okay. Well, like last summer, I was I was inspired to do what evolved into what was called Operation Crystalline Grid. So I would go to parks uh, or in my town and leave crystal grids uh, as a gift for whoever would find them. Mm -hmm. So we to, do that all along the way as part of being a get, becoming a gatekeeper and a grid keeper too. I did the same thing, which was getting out with the crystals and the planet and the earth and planting them and passing them out. And, and I still do the same thing too. I still carry bags with me and everywhere I go, everybody gets gifts. Keep going. Yeah. So I, well, yeah. see, that was huge for me because I was a hoarder. I loved, I loved each and every one of my crystals, which is thousands. Yeah. And I didn't want to part with any of them. So there was like such a huge thing for me to start giving them away. It's a part of the attachment energy that's got to go. Yeah. My universe in the beginning, the Andaras were like, don't get attached. <laughs> and it's a part of the exception, obsession and connection, but there's also a, a, we have to be able to not get attached which is important yeah. to clear that because it'll correlate to, to humans and peoples and things and, and identities and all that kind of stuff. And it's a, it's a not attached to energy that's very free. Does that make sense? So in the beginning, we do create that, but then we have to completely dissolve that. I know. So it, I knew it was a big thing for me to start doing that, to share. Uh -huh. And then I wanted, you know, to inspire other people to share as well. So we do, don't we? Yes. So then I was uh, staying at someone's house for Halloween and of course I had moved and of course, you know, most of my car was my crystals <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to give crystals away for Halloween. And she goes, well, I have candy. They're just going to think those are rocks. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> so I got my little bowl of crystal. I put bunch of crystals in a bowl she had her candy so when people when the kids came to the door uh she had her candy and i had my crystals and what did they go for of course those kids went for the crystals and it, they were just so excited one girl was so excited she was running back to her parents and i felt so bad she tripped and fell on her uh her costume because she was so excited, excited. to go show her mom her crystal. <laughs> yeah. My grandbaby, my, my grandson, he's like grandma. And it's constantly, he has his whole crystal connection. We open portals together. The children, they get this, you know, it's like, come on, let's go open portals. He's like, okay, grandma. And, yeah. and, and the fun part is, is that it's like, okay, what crystal do you want next? He's like, oh, I want rainbow. It's all rainbow. Look, and I'm like, oh, of course it is. And one time he's, I held up a gold one. He's like, Grandma, I saw that one in my sleep. My son is like, I don't understand the stuff you guys have. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, but he doesn't have this relationship with other people. It's like this thing. And I'm like, of course it is. And he's like, I'm going to have to build him a whole crystal cabinet. I'm like, of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> Now my family, you know, they're all in the crystals, not really a, in that way. But you know what? It, it, part of the sharing this is bringing this into other people's lives. And, and mm -hmm. it's an awakening. It's not yeah. something new. It's right. a remembering. It's an activating. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, the kids and, and it, was, it was phenomenal. I just want to share this so I don't forget. 
I made this grid for today uh, to share oh, wow. on here. And the crystals, they started talking to me years ago and telling me where they want to go in the grids. And then they, they just started getting, you know, more and more elaborate. Uh, uh, but I just wanted to show everybody because it has all my favorite things in here, if you can see it. Yeah. It's, it's got my mermaids and my unicorns. Um, rose quartz is always like my favorite to add to a grid Beautiful. to assist with opening the heart. Yeah. And then I like to amplify it with, of course, all of my <laughs> quartz crystal. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Which activates the gamma light body and, and the crystalline consciousness. And rose quartz was really important for me when I was when I, back before I woke up fully and I was trying to get my heart open. I found that if I would um, fill my room with warts, rose quartz, put the rose quartz under my pillow, hold the wart, rose quartz, what I found is by sleeping with it and sleeping with your crystals and quartz crystals and all that stuff is really important for all of us. So you guys who, who, who do this, we understand. Um, rose quartz, actually, I would wake up feeling all fuzzy, wuzzy, and soft. I'm like, oh, it, it, and I started understanding I could use amethyst back then. Eventually, crystals, you, you absorb the frequency, you become yeah. the crystal, and then it's like, oh, it's just a rock. And then you gift them to everybody else. And I keep them around here, the house, for people who come here because they connect with them and they love them and stuff, and they're beautiful for, for creating grids. Mm -hmm. um, the rose quartz. Um, on a human level, the, the, the carbon-based body actually works with crystals usually first. It, it takes us opening our, our heart enough before we actually start working with Andara. So a lot of people are like, well, well yeah, Andara is just like, just like a piece of glass to me. Well, well, for a lot of people, it will be that way for a while because they require interactivity. They require love. They require the playful child. They require people... And Dara's in like kissing them. Kiss, kiss, kiss. I love. They require love. And, and so if you're not engaging them, they go to sleep just like humans do. They, they, they stop working because they actually depend on you. Your light, your energy is what activates them. Nature, anything of light activates and stuff like that. So and Dara's are a two-way communication and so a lot of people if they haven't come to this place where they're wide open and connected there's no connection to have there's no experience to have and so they just sit there and go I don't get it and that was actually my first experience too and, and so like with the crystals they're actually really important and, and I think it's important to explain there's no rules so so when you're creating a grid you don't get a book out and say, how am I going to create a grid? Unless you need to. But, and I would love for you guys to share one, creating grids. It's whatever you feel. Mm -hmm. It's whatever you see. It's whatever you want to do. It's like, go all out. Nobody cares. There are no rules in, in how you create. That's the linear way. I, I want to add that I went to a, a spiritual expo with a friend and uh -huh. she had a list of everyone, every talk she wanted to go to and all the uh, crystals that she wanted that. to buy. And I said, oh no, that, that's not how it works. That's how I did it in the beginning, though, <laughs> but I did there. <laughs> that's why I wanted to bring this up is because we, when I first started, you know, get up and drive to the metaphysical store. Get up and drive to the experts. Get up and drive. I had a crystal mountain nearby. I didn't even know it for a long time. I go sit on that freaking crystal mountain all day long because you're activating becoming a crystal. Um, but but I would go with the linear mentality of the crystal I needed for this. And then I would get there and I'd go, oh, no. And you start feeling. You have to touch. You have to feel because, because this is going to tell you. So that's a great point to make. Because, yes, it, it, this isn't linear. It's not what you think. It, it's allow yourself to feel. Allow mm -hmm. yourself to connect. If you need to make a linear list, because lists are a linear thing, eventually you get away from the list, but you'll go back to the list later in a different way. Um, this is about trusting and exploring and letting go 
of all the linear perceptions and beliefs and, and, and what you think you need to do or what you think, you know? So, so like for me, the other day I posted all of these on my Facebook page and it immediately broke out with a fight. People arguing this and that. And I'm like, you missed the whole point. Look at the beauty people. Did you receive the activation? How does it make you feel? And, and you know, everybody, I don't care. You can call this a jelly bean. And I'm, <laughs> oh, you know, you can call it. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> you know, I mean, here, this might have cost $5. And oh my God, it's a complete Lemurian activation. You know, I don't know, I'm making it a bee, but I'm just making a point, okay? It is that, it's the feeling. What did you feel when you saw that picture or, or did you see the words and get all caught up in the words? <clears throat> did you just start a fight over words? <laughs> really? Kind of miss what, whole I, I don't like to label my um, grids and my, my pictures because I want people to just feel whatever they want to feel from it. No, but I, I'm just going to say that day, I was announcing I had a new thing for an activation. I posted the picture oh. for the activation and I put the words on it so people could locate them if they oh. wanted to get some too. Oh, gotcha. So the words, so they know what to go look up if they wanted some. Mm -hmm. Not a, oh my God, is this that? Can you prove this to me? And it, it you know, it, it, it's like, <laughs> nobody cares. So, so it's really important people. <sighs> out of your head no matter what the word is that matter what's the feeling what do you get are you really connecting with all of you are you all up in your head that's like a hundred and ninety thousand percent of this process the whole thing is is it doesn't matter what you call it it doesn't matter where you found it doesn't have matter how much money you pay for it it really doesn't matter what matters it is the purpose for the part of the process you're in. It matters how you value your, your soul's journey. It matters how you value yourself, how you treat yourself, how you respect yourself, how much you love yourself and each other and everything. And, and for some people, well, and I don't want to get into the money part of it because that's just another whole thing. But for some people, when you spend money on it, you automatically value it. You're actually going to work with it. Whereas other things, if you get it for free, it's like, oh, it has no value. Be because we don't understand the value system for, for new earth, multidimensional existence is a very different value system. When, when you connect your consciousness and your heart blows wide open and this pure love comes just bursting from inside of you and you remember everything again, your priorities change, what you value changes, what matters to you changes, all, everything changes. And so, so it's really important to get away from all those mindsets and, and, and words are just to relay a message. Words are just to transmit energy. Words are just to, we put them together so that we can explain things. But technically words are light encoded or they carry each person's stuff. Lisa, I want to share something. Yes, please. Based, continuing on what you are saying. Mm -hmm. The other day you had posted this. The blue, I know. I started to keep that one for me, girlfriend, but it, it said no, somebody, somebody, this one's meant for somebody. Yep. The moment you posted, Lisa, I was blasted because remember you and I had talked how I had seen blue beans and I got my consciousness expanded multiple folds. And then one day I, I got those blue beans again in my consciousness. And they collapsed my entire timeline. My entire life collapsed and went into my heart. And I, I was shown how to do that. And I realized after our, 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 us talking, that is my highest aspect. And also when I closed my eyes, I was shown a constellation. And I started looking up furiously, what is that? And that was Lyra. 
and yes, the star is. that that bright there was a bright star that in the constellation one star started glowing very brightly and that was vega and i was like oh my god it all makes sense and when you posted this when you posted <laughs> this i was like that's mine i didn't even i just went and i bought it i didn't even think i knew it had to be on me and from that day i just feel very like very highest aligned it spoke Beautiful. to me. like i i feel a sense of groundedness power and calmness connectedness friend connectedness with myself Balance. with myself yes like i never felt before Inner so peace, had, inner yeah. balance is it's a very it's a very different yeah. energy. And the one you held up that actually is an activation of the Lyra and Lyran energy. And I so felt, by the way. Yeah, when I saw this, I yeah. knew it's my I knew it's mine. I th there yeah. was no thought. I went, I bought it, done deal. Didn't even have to think twice. It was done. Yeah. Matter of seconds. Yeah. Yeah, the, and, and working with the different ones and, and what we don't understand is through cosmic consciousness, it's all about colors and tones and hues yeah. and, and, and everything. And so the, the color is an activation too. So I can pick a, a blue piece of paper and that can be my activation yeah. or I can pick up a crystal or I can pick up, you, you know, it doesn't really matter the color blue. You actually start to feel the, all your senses, you'll feel the, the colors running through your, your cosmic light body feels and, and, and you actually can, can, you know, somebody that's talking about smelling colors. Yeah. We smell color too. Yeah. You hear, see, feel, smell. It's the, it's a whole multi-sensory event and experience and stuff. So that, that's great to, to yeah. share. So beautiful. Yes. Awesome. Miss Natalie. You. I'm going to put you on the spot, girlfriend. Eve, you haven't spoken. We have stuff about children to talk about. Lori, I can't remember. Did you talk this time or last time? <laughs> 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 We've talked so many times, I can't remember. So, Miss <laughs> Natalie, I'm going to hold the floor for you because Natalie is so proper that she won't jump in on top of all of us. <laughs> quiet. And, and go ahead, sweeter. I, we're going to be quiet and, and let you share. Well, um, apart from being crazy doing grids every day, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> yeah, it's, I just wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is doing grids. I have to, I have to, before coffee, before breakfast, I just have to have create. To. Yeah. <laughs> That's a soul expression. Yeah. Oh. The have to create, the have to, the, it's a new have to, it's your whole being coming through you. So like getting up and sharing knowledge or light codes, yeah, you, my, your soul is speaking through mm. you. And it says, I have to look at me all these years, share, share, share. I had to share the knowledge because it's actually what blows wide open all of our new reality. Mm. It, 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 it's an important, it's a part of our contribution. It's a part of our, our, our soul breeds service. Mm -hmm. We're in service to, to humanity. We're in service as love. We're in service as light beings here. And it's a part of our service here. You have to, it's a part of the process for each person yeah. that have to. Yeah. Beautiful. To. Yeah. <laughs> and well, I just go in, into my office and take, I don't know. I don't realize which I uh, take, too many, so many different type of crystals and all of the sudden, um, sometimes it just takes 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, it's, it's done. But I don't, I don't realize how I place it or it's just like automatic. You do it. It's natural. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. the thing about is that that's what we were talking about earlier. Is there's no rules. No, no rules at all. How do you want to create? What do you see? This is where you use your, I will ask people, what do you see? They're like, I, I don't know. I don't see anything. Well, close your eyes. Mm. Sit. It's inside of you. You have to sit with it until it comes forth. And, and so when you're creating, you see it through energetic vision. Does this make sense? Yeah. You see what you want to create and you just open yourself up and allow yourself. Mm-hmm. To be that, 
which is beautiful because look at the beautiful that you guys that are watching today when we get done we'll have another video that we're putting together that there's the page and the galleries and there's the free gifts and all that kind of stuff we turned it into an entire event and stuff and and you'll get to see the different expressions and the different energies and the activations and each person when, when they just let go and go do whatever they want to do it's basically opening up to just let go mm -hmm. and do whatever you feel, do whatever you see. Um, there are no rules for creation. There is no right way, wrong way. There is no proper way. It's, it's all inside of you. It's about, it's, a, it's about allowing yourself the experience, about allowing yourself to bring this forward. And in the beginning, we didn't allow ourselves. We had all of these mental constructs. We had all these belief systems. We had all that stuff. I know Lola. Lola, we've been going for this for, for like a few years of breaking down all that stuff. And I did too for years and years. I'm like, well, well, I don't know the right way. When I was taking energy classes, I was all caught up in the right way and the wrong way to move my hand. Really? And, and one day after like 20 classes, I had to take 20 classes to break my linear constructs down. You know, I had certificates. I was a certified teacher and I'm standing here. I had to take class like 19 other times. I had 19 certificates before... I would bring it from inside of me and let go of the linear, con the linear stuff that I had was my issue. It was my block. <laughs> it was my hole that was causing the whole mess to start with. And, and I'll never forget one of the last classes that I, uh, you know, so that I could learn and open up, I had started hosting the classes for another teacher and, and letting her use my apartment. And so that, that was my exposure constantly until I gained that comfort. It's a comfort zone of openness. It's a comfort zone of trusting what you feel. It's, it's non judgment. The whole thing is self judgment. The yeah. whole freaking thing is yeah. self judging. And, and I'll never forget the last one that, that I attended because I didn't need it anymore. So all of a sudden the class is ended. Go figure. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'll never forget the last one. I had all this perception of the right way and the wrong way to hold my hand and the judgment and how I'm going to look. And if I do it, the, you know, and, and this whole battle inside of me was going on. And I got up and, and my energy teacher told me, she said, come on, Lisa, you're going to get up here and do this for this too. And I'm like, oh, good God. So I get up there and I close my eyes. And in that one brief moment, I went, you know what? I don't care. I don't care if I do it wrong. I don't care if people are judging me. I don't care. I don't care. And what's funny is all the symbols that you do, I threw them out the window and I went, you know what? I'm going to move my hand all over the place. <laughs> so like, I'm doing it however I want to do. And I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And, and, and the moment I didn't care was the moment everything changed because I cared so much to do it the right way, the wrong way. I actually couldn't care. I actually couldn't do it. Yeah. And, and so the funny part was I'm like inside, I'm having this whole, everybody's standing there in their sacred space and they're doing this and I'm like battling all this stuff going <laughs> crazy inside of me. I'm like, you know what? I don't care. And in that moment, I just closed my eyes. The funny part is the moment I did that, my energy just went <sighs> out huge. I expanded and everybody in the room felt it. My heart had been closed. Mm. And, and, and in that moment, my heart went, I don't care. And I was able to come from inside my me, my higher self, my love, my pure, my, my, my non-judgmental me, and actually be completely in the experience and let go of all of the mental, mental stuff of it all. The cool part was in that moment, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna move my hand any way I want to. And, and I closed my eyes and I just started <laughs> squiggling stuff in the air. <laughs> We got done. And my teacher, she looked at me and she goes, you finally got it. <laughs> because I've been saying all this mess. I don't get it. I don't get it. They're like, everything. That's okay, Lisa. You'll, you will. And I would sit there and all these people tell me, ooh, I feel it all. And I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> because I was in my head. And, and, and when you're in your head, you can't feel. 
you actually have to open your heart and let completely go so that you can connect with everything and, and just be in it all fully with everything you've got. In that moment, that's what I did. And in that moment, my vibration raised, the energy shifted, my heart opened, I got out of my head, and all of a sudden, I could feel it all. And that's when I, you know, that was like huge game changer for me because in that moment, my teacher looked at me after like a year and a half ago, I'll get it. <laughs> She's like, you finally got it. And it had nothing to do with doing it right or wrong or, or, or doing it. I was, you know, it, 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 and, and this whole journey is that way. The whole thing is that way. And, and so, um, and it's funny, and years later, she's like, Lisa, um, you're the only one that ever went on to do anything out of all, you know, and, and, and she and I, you know, so it was kind of cool where I started and all the judgment. And I started with all of the linear stuff and I started with all of the have to do it this way and how long it actually took me to break through all the judgment. The judgment is the thing that stops us from everything, which, and so breaking all that judgment down and learning to let completely go. Mm. The judgment is our ego. The judgment is the thing that keeps us small. It's the walls around our heart and judgment turns into 12,000 billion other things, which in, eventually comes a narcissistic energy from all of us. But it, it, but it also becomes a way for us not to take responsibility and stand as light. The judgment is a deflection of us pointing the finger at everybody else or judging because the judgment is what stops us from having the amazing experiences. So, so anyway. Can I share I something? Yes, please. So I was all caught oh, up in circles and rules and the right way, the wrong way. And I was afraid, what, what will happen if I did it the wrong way? Oh my God, <coughs> the universe would collapse. And then after a few years of doing this, uh, one day my universe said, let me take care of that for you. My whole brain went blank, like, Nothing to see here. Nothing. Like, I was talking to people. Who are you people? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I went to class. I'm like, what's happening? I have no idea. And I had to start over. I had these crystals. I had these books. I had these things to do to go on with my life. And all of a sudden, I kept asking, how do I do this? <laughs> no idea and then my universe said just just do it so I closed my eyes and I picked crystal random crystals put them on me put them on other people it's like we're doing this it's fine this is how it's done and people kept, kept asking me what are you doing well we're doing something something <laughs> great is happening look at me I'm happy look at you you're happy everybody's happy isn't that the point? I mean, who cares if it's Lemurian or who cares if it's Atlantean? Who cares? I don't remember. I mean, if you can remember it, that's great. Go. You'll remember it when you're meant to remember it. You'll understand it when you're meant to understand it. It's really about letting go of it all and learning to trust and connect yeah. and heal. It'll come through as we go. You'll understand that in the moment, if I ask you right now, if you really connect inside, you're going to understand exactly what you need to say. You don't yeah. need to formulate it in advance. Yeah. That's which is the way our old human used to do. We wanted to formulate everything in advance and have it perfect so that when we open our mouth, the right word came out. This isn't how that works. It's like, <laughs> no, the perfection is in the imperfection. I, I mean, and, and anybody that says I need to know, you don't need to know. That's your head. Get out of your head. Nobody cares. When, when, when you'll, you'll get to know when you let go of the need yeah. to know. Once you've gone through it, you'll go, oh, that's how it works. <laughs> or so a universal the, restart. But the, the excuse <laughs> the reset. experience and the reset too. Yes. Um, which, is, which is a huge part of the process, it, which is really important because look at what you were forced to do. You were learned to, you were forced to feel 
you were, and that was free. And you who cared? I was so smart. I you, what were you free of? The prison inside? What were you free of? The mentalities that kept you in prison? Look at what we're free of. The mental constructs of our, when you get into dimensions, you're talking about heaven and hell and anchoring heaven on earth. And, and your, your human mind is hell. Yeah. The resistance is what, what keeps each person in hell. The suffering inside, <coughs> we have to break out of that inside of us and bring the magic from us. And so you start applying all the metaphors. And, and technically, what did you really do? You moved past your mind. And I'm your heart open. And you're free. And when I realized it's all judgment, my, uh, my chest wall just started dissolving. It's like acid being poured and everything is just being opened like that. And I'm like, oh my God, I feel so light. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Look at it. Look at the words we use. Yeah. Now you can float and fly. Now you can, you know, go be a dragon. Now you can be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. So, so it's just like me. I get up and, you know, I, I'm going to put my glitter on. And, and, and it's like, oh, you're a mermaid. I'm like, yep, I'm a mermaid. You know, yeah. everyone knows when Lisa goes, I took pictures. I don't do pictures, self pictures anymore. And, I, and it's like, somebody asked me for pictures for an event. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll get some pictures. I put them up. And first thing, I think it was Natalie. She's like, mermaid. I'm like, yep, <laughs> but this is the beauty. When I go out and about and I connect with people, I'm in my angel energy. I'm in my mermaid energy. The question is, which aspect do you want to be right now? That's the fun part. Which aspect would you like to be? Yeah. Right. We get to be it is. Natalie Dragon. <laughs> yep. I'm going to be a unicorn today. And I have to tell you, um, Dora. <laughs> unicorn, I know. Oh, look at you. You got the unicorn slippers. She she bought us both. Uh, okay, so I brought my unicorn. So here we go. I brought my unicorn to one of the twelve thousand unicorns. Yeah, we have lots of unicorns. The other day, Dara, you posted a thing about a unicorn thing, but I didn't get to comment and stuff. That same day, if I'm not mistaken, my picture was a unicorn in the cloud. We had a unicorn portal open up that day. We had three different ones and stuff, and that was one of them. We've had a lot of royalty ones going on with the 12D template and stuff. So, But I just wanted to tell you, the day you were writing about the unicorn and putting the sky pictures up, mine was a unicorn cloud. And, and so it was a part of a massive collective <laughs> cosmic activation. Because you guys noticed the unicorn energy like it has been off the charts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, which is, which is awesome. So it, it's a part of the magical realms, you know, and we get into the different crystals. We were talking yesterday about Labradorite and the, yeah. and, and, and the elemental kingdom and the crystal kingdom. We're opening access to all these. Yep. There it is. I got is my it, big one somewhere. Labradorite? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hold it up closer, Kim, so she can see. That one's got like a good copper tone. I've to got it. one with such one something. Yeah. Right? This, this oh, big. gold. Oh, good. Yeah. There. Can you oh, see wow. that? Wow. That's gorgeous. They're so nice. really, in my grids, I've started working. I do the quartz crystals now. Natalie, you started me back on that. I'm like, okay, I have to go get some more quartz <laughs> crystals. Because I'm like, I look, I have to laugh. Hold on, I'm coming back to love it. I looked at all your guys' stuff the other day when we started putting this together, and you guys are posting. I'm like, I went out to create a grid, and all my stuff is big house grids. Mine's like this big huge ordeal and you know my kitchen counter is like this whole it, but I started with little bitty things but I look at Natalie's and I'm like oh I want to do something like that I couldn't physically do it I'm sitting here looking at this thing and I go blank and I'm like I'm not even capable of doing something simple <laughs> anymore and it was mind-blowing at how hard it was for me <laughs> to create something simple, it really, I had to get completely out of what I'm used to doing now after all these years. And I went out earlier, they're, they're fading right now, and picked some flowers. I'm like, you know what? I'm taking mine in the backyard and I'm going to sit with flowers. And, and so you guys are forcing me <laughs> to like, I want to do that. And, and, you know, we take our crystals and our jars, we go to the beach, the Lemurian, um, the, the Labradorite. 
All these different things activate different aspects of ourself. They activate those different dimensional aspects, those dimensions within us and where we hold and they open portals inside which open up those magical and mystical realms which open up the consciousness. And the more we live from that consciousness, the more that becomes our reality here. And so the Labradorite, um, I have a big piece and some smaller pieces and stuff like that too, but I've started Moldavite, Labradorite, even though I, I don't do much with crystals anymore, Labradorite and Moldavite. Notice the end Did you see this one, Lisa? Looks Ooh, like a no, I didn't see That's that one. one. Doesn't it look like a foot? <laughs> It does. It does. Hilarious. It does. I just, I had to have it. And yeah. and now my fairy that I just got, can, she can oh, sit on it. I love your fairy, but I saw that went, ooh, I want you one. You can just sit oh. on there. Isn't that adorable? I yeah. know. I love that. If Kim, if you ever, anybody ever finds one like that, I want one. Um, <laughs> I love that. that. That's the thing about it is all these different crystals. They activate different places inside of us. It's really about embracing that and going full on and all out. It's like really just taking it and letting completely go. I want to go back to playing and getting dirty because it's really important that, that in order to merge with Gaia's consciousness, you have to be willing to get out and get on the earth and get dirty and hug a tree and lay down and, and soak the solar activation, Solaris, the, the light encodement. And what a lot of people don't understand is that the sun activates our solar plexus, activates our light codes in our body, has geometrics and all these different codes, but different levels, if you will. I'm using levels uh, non-linearly. It's not a comparison type. It's an explanation type thing. But, but that's the, the solar is your soul. And so every time you activate through solar codes, if you're protecting yourself against the sun, you're protecting yourself from yourself. You're protecting yourself mm -hmm. from feeling. You're protecting yourself of clearing all that stuff that's in the way. And so we really have to put things in perspective to understand what we're really doing here. You know, we're, we're supposed to, we were talking, I think it was Natalie, we can look directly into the sun. Yeah, yeah, so funny. Yeah, because you actually become the vibration of the sun you are the sun you are the solar being you are the light being here the different levels of light body allow you to do all these these cool weird bizarre things that that you know don't make any logical sense but you know when you get into um galactic we have to do the galactic aspect and we have to do the solar aspect and you merge them they become the same thing so so galactic tends to go up where a soul takes you deeper inside and so you have to do both. So you have to go up, ascended, crisis frequencies take you up higher mm. vibrationally so that you actually, when, the more you hold the highest level of consciousness and the highest vibration, the more you pull your body into that dimension. Mm -hmm. And so basically the ability to reconstruct matter in order to match your vibration it is really important here to hold that consciousness, that's what reprograms your DNA. To hold in one capacity, that's true, and then we'll flip it and it'll be a different truth. So that's why people, we don't battle truth here. <laughs> we don't battle consciousness. There is no battle here. There, there is, you know, so, but that's really important to, to, to understand is Lola, yes the battle and the judgment inside and what people don't understand, the whole battle's inside of us. That's where the battle is. Because when you actually open up on a soul level to allow yourself the full experience of full consciousness, to allow yourself to become your higher self, to allow yourself to return to a pure existence, to honor your body and your light body and all of these things in order to look at your physical reality and align it yourself a lot of people don't understand this is our responsibility to align the physical reality. When you are coming from your ascended state of consciousness, your higher aspects of you, when you are being pure source consciousness, you're being pure love. You're being loving and respectful to yourself, your physical body. You're, you're reconstructing your world according to light consciousness. To, through, through higher states of consciousness, through love consciousness, through unity consciousness, and you're actually starting to care on a different level. 
So like judgment cares about all these things. When you shift out of that place of judgment, you don't care about any of those things. <laughs> all of a sudden, you actually care about each other. You actually care about the earth. You actually care. You care from a very different place. And that's where everybody's got to get to. You have to care that much. But it's not a saving. And it's not a finger pointing. And it's not a blame. And it's not a, it, it, it's, it's a caring from that pure loving place inside of you. It's a very pure caring. It's a very different caring. It's a soul. And, and we each have to reach that place inside of us. And, and our head was in the way. But, but I'm going back to, I know, you know me all over the place. Going back to getting dirty. The reason I'm going to say this is, is when I first started experiencing New Earth as a reality, and then my universe was like, you're going to have to tell everybody we're already on New Earth. It's like, what? It's like, yeah, it's all around you. you. You actually have to open your heart enough so you can actually experience it and see it. Well, that became a whole new ball game, you know, because everybody's going one day, one day, one day. And I said, no, if you're sitting here saying one day or a later date, you're not present in the moment and looking around you. You're not actually in the experience. You can't see it or feel it or experience it because you're still waiting for a one day. And, and, and so this is about right now. Quantum is right now. And, and so when it came time to me fully to live new earth with my every breath, breath, my whole experience, it was, I basically had to get out on the earth and get muddy and dirty. The reason being is I didn't have that connection with Gaia. It was missing. Um, it, it was always, oh, I can't get dirty. Oh, you know, let me wash my hands. so I don't want to get dirty. And, you know, I had all these programs inside of me that kept me at a distance mm. from getting dirty the way I looked or, you know, and, and we can go back to childhood and all this kind of stuff. But, but part of my programming was, oh, don't get dirty. And so I carried that through for the rest of my life until it came time to get on new earth. It was like, no, you got to get dirty. Gaia is speaking. She's like, put your butt, put your butt in the water, put your butt on the rocks, put your, get down, get dirty, get on the earth, get the mud all over. You want to know what happened? The first time I sat down, I went hiking here on the island. It's like, take the shoes off, feed on the earth, take the shoes off. That was hard for me for, for a long time get on the earth, feel the earth, you know? And so that's a part of becoming a gatekeeper, grid keeper is reconnecting on a universal level. So when you look up, you're actually disconnecting from the physical reality and, and, and activating your universal consciousness, which makes it easier and stuff. Um, where, where, where you're looking. So look at all the people looking up right now, looking at the sky. My universe is like, look up, look up, look up. 24 hours a day, look up. Keep your camera with you. Keep looking up. And so it actually assists you with waking up when you're looking up, which is kind of cool. And, and, and stuff. So getting dirty. And, and so I had a client and she flew in. And it, I started understanding the importance of getting on the earth. And, and so she had the same program of, I can't get dirty. I got to look proper. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. We're not playing that game. <laughs> I took it down to the beach. I'm like, sit down put the mud all, get, put the sand all over you, cut. She's like, I can't do that. I'm like, oh, yes, you are. She's like, oh, no. And, and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll cure that. And I picked up the sand and I threw it at her. And then we turned into a fight. And the next thing she knew, she forgot the program and she's throwing and she's laughing. <laughs> and, and she's like, oh, my God, this is so, we forgot how to play. Mm -hmm. Playing is a part of our new earth experience. You have to play like an innocent child. You have to learn to connect. And so many of us, especially the more linear, the more logical, the more, you know, a lot of us like me, computer programmer and, and all these, these things that I did managing and all that kind of stuff. The more linear we are, the less we can play. We won't let ourselves play. We have, oh, I, 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 have, I have to focus on reality. Yeah. 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 That's not reality. That's a different reality. That's what actually brings forth the new earth reality. It's going to replace your old reality. <laughs> Learning how to play again is actually hard. The more linear we are, we can't. 
Can I share People something? said to me, what, sweetie? Can I share something? Of course. Um, I hated the sea. Can you imagine how distorted Your that was? Hated I hated the sea. That, mm -hmm. that it's supposed to be. Yep. I thought it was a uh, fear of, um, oh my God, drowning and things like that. So my universe said, we'll take care of that for you. Not a problem. So mm -hmm. I got sent to the beach. And uh, the first night when I'd barely gotten there and the guy said, we're going night swimming. And I'm like, you are going night swimming. <laughs> I can't swim. I don't want to go into the water. Not even during the day. We're not doing this. But they convinced me and I went there all terrified that, oh my God, I am going to die. My first night there and I'm, I was going to die. <laughs> Look at all the stories you made up. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all the stories. Same thing happened to me. My universe was like, get out in nature, go to the lake. I'm like, oh, no, no. And I had all the excuses and <laughs> all the stories. And it went on for years. You know? I was busy. We were busy. Yeah. yeah. I had one time, it's like, you're going on vacation. I want to go on vacation. I got stuff to do and I don't have time for this. And I'm just, I am complaining with every, and all of a sudden it's like, shut up, <laughs> shut up. You're going on vacation and you're going to enjoy it. And I'm like, I don't want to go on vacation. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm this, this whole thing inside of me. <laughs> and, and, and what's funny was I had no reason not to go. I, you have all this ego resistance, this, this whole ridiculous mess going on inside. And it's the words were, and it's funny at the time I was playing with Oracle cards and I was actually using them for me to connect to higher guidance because I, did, I wasn't able to understand or communicate with myself yet. And, and that's a part of the process is, is that inner communication and listening and all that kind of stuff. And so I pulled a card and the words were vacation. I went, oh, fine. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, I'm kicking and screaming. <laughs> but how this you want to know what's funny was that vacation was a massive awakening process for me, like huger than I could have ever imagined in every capacity. And I kicked and I screamed. Everything <laughs> that I needed to wake up, I kicked and I screamed again. That's what actually creates our reality is having to collapse on us though. It's because we're refusing. We're resisting. We, we, we won't. We were like, no, I'm doing my reality my way. <laughs> yeah, I know. Believe who doesn't me. like going on holiday? I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> you, everything. You know, and I've told the story for years, my universe, inside the subtle realms, whatever you want to call it, the energy, you know, to us, it's like, oh, I can't believe in the invisible world. The magical world is our visible world. And, and it actually becomes visible to us as you open your heart and you tune in and you start to open up and see all the invisible realms become visible to us. You get to see, it's like, oh my God, this is so freaking amazing. Two years, my universe like, get up, go like, oh, I don't want to go like today. I have all, you know, and I'm just a, you know, I got to do this and I can do this. And, and the next day, the next week, get up, go like, uh, I did that for two years. Guess what happened? Guess where Lisa had to move? My universe moved me to the freaking light. <laughs> I'm still kicking and screaming. I don't want to move to that lake. And it's like, you're going to go to the lake. We've been telling you for two years to get up. And it's like, no, you found every excuse known to man. And my, what happens for a lot of people is your circumstances change, where you have to do that. And that's how this works. Your circumstances, it'll force. Your ego is only being forced by your higher self because you won't listen. And so it's actually you doing it to yourself on a universal level. So nothing's happening to us. It, it, it's breaking all those barriers and limits and stories and excuses. And re, it's a resistance. It's ego resistance and it, it's the matrix in our body. We don't understand we have this entire matrix system that, and, and all. So, yeah, I know it's so funny when we actually look at ourselves and we laugh at ourselves at how, how and, and my early days was like, that's ridiculous. I, I would see my mentality <laughs> and I just started labeling. My label was, you're just ridiculous. That's what I called my ego. You're just ridiculous. I'm not listening to you anymore. You're ridiculous. And, and, you know, instead of battling it, you just call it like it is. 
you're just like, ah, you know, for the longest time, I couldn't even see any of it. And then it becomes just hilarious and really stupid. <laughs> and, and then it becomes our ignorance. We move from this to, well, you're my ignorance. <laughs> and then it's called ignorant bliss. And it's because we're like, oh, if I can just stay ignorant, I'll be blissful. Well, that's not how this works. You don't get to be <laughs> ignorant for the rest of your life. It's like, no. <laughs> it is so funny. All right, Miss Eve, you haven't said anything. We're still going to, come on, girlfriend, you share. You do a lot of stuff with kids and clients and yourself. And so what, what would you? Um, I love taking my consciousness into Andaris. A lot of them, the creation that I do instead of grids, I love photographing. We don't get sunlight in Hong Kong that much. Most of the time it's cloudy because of the pollution, but then we have the lights in, uh, in the evening. So I would put Andaris on top of, um, you know, mobiles, and then I would start taking pictures. And um, I have an obsession. It's the obsession with bubbles. I'm going to show that to you right now. Uh, Everything. Yep. Everything she, does, with, she, goes, she turns into a little child when she sees the bubbles. Yeah, if you can yeah. see the bubbles. <laughs> so I look for bubbles. As long as an Andara or a crystal have bubbles, I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> She has a beautiful that came in and I'm, it's got bubbles. The whole thing is bubbles. I went, oh, there she goes. And I put it, I took a picture. I'm like, I got you a new one. And so, yeah, bubbles. Look at what's like that. The bubbles to me is a reminder of home, of the galaxies, of the, of the stars. Every time I see bubbles, I get so excited. So, and um, a lot of the Andaras that I have have the, have star maps, have Milky Ways, and it just, you know, brings my heart open. So um, I work a lot with um, Andaras that have bubbles. And uh, my favorite color, Bing. diamond. <laughs> diamond. Yeah, the diamond yeah. like co-consciousness. Yeah. yeah. It's well, been my long time favorite. Because he's been coming here for the, like last year and a half with me and we do all this stuff together and, and all. And so, so we'll get like, she hasn't had seen it yet. I have a new flashlight for her and stuff. But <gasps> really cool because oh it's so God, bright. That's a massive one. Yeah. So I bought, so we get in the bed and we turn all the lights out and, and, and you take it and you put it on it and it's like 12,000 pictures of bubbles and starbursts and you're traveling through the galaxies and you know, it, it turns into this whole experience. I have a green one. I have to laugh because every, every time she would come here, she's like, Oh, this is yours. Not understanding, she was about to go through the same activation and, and stuff. So one, I got this big green one, and, and and the power of the energy of the and it's all bubbles. Okay, the elder, yeah. No, the gr round green one, the source consciousness. Oh, that's just, okay. And, and so I handed it to her, and she held it, and she closed her eyes, and she just. Went, She's like, "Oh, this is yours. That's." <laughs> This is your source consciousness. Now I get it. I understand what you are. When I talk about source consciousness, people think it's this, this thing and they don't understand. And, and I'm like, we are source consciousness. This is, this is a quantum consciousness. This is the pure consciousness of everything. And so she, she has this expansion and then she hands it. She goes, oh, this is yours. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. <laughs> and inside I'm going, oh, get ready, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so funny is like within a day or two, she's like, oh, I get it. Because that was her activation. And she thought it was all me. And, and But we have to have our own experiences and, and stuff. So it's just so funny, our perception and, and, and stuff and how this is. So I have to laugh at her. Um, because it becomes comical and fun. You get to play like a yep. child, yep. you know, and, and, and go ahead. I'm going to be quiet. And um, some of the people in my community, we have one girl that can smell the frequency of Andaras. Yep. So every time when she get a new Andara, she would tell me, oh, Eve, I can smell this. Sometimes it's a flower. Sometimes it's food. A lot of them is food. <laughs> And she can smell the frequency. It's really, it's really fascinating. So I've invited her to start, you know, sharing her experience. She smells strawberries from the pink ones. 
And then she would have all kinds of smells. She got one of the olives and then she starts smelling olives. But it's very, you know, it's a very beautiful fragrance. So that's how I learned, you know, you don't just, you don't just have holographic access. You can also smell the frequencies. And it's then I've got on, it's every sense. Smell is one yeah. of the senses that has to come on. Like taste will be another one for a lot of people. Go ahead. We, yeah, we, we go really don't experimental. Eat Nora, <laughs> we, <laughs> when I say taste, I'm like, don't eat Nora. We we went really experimental. We kissed the Andaras to sleep with the Andaras, and we have tried to taste the Andaras as well. So we've done a lot of things with the Andaras, taking them to the restaurants, and we have a couple of children in our community, and um, one of them is four and a half. One of them is, I think, right now is about ten, and we have another one that is um eleven, and they're all crystal children. They speak to the Andaras and they can have, they have full holographic access. Every time they went to work with one Andara, they see the whole, you know, it's like a movie strip for them. And they tell me, mama, it's live right now, can't you see? So, and um, they bring forth messages, the Andaras tell them where they come from. And uh, the children, the moment they touch the Andara, they already can see, you know, all the beings, they would draw them out. And one of the four four year old child, you know, she she keeps saying to um, her mom and me, um, all the unicorns have rainbows. You know, the when they the third eye, they said, you know, it's not white. It's supposed to be rainbow because that child has access to rainbow consciousness. It's really magical when you receive pictures from your clients, and you know, the mom at first they were all a bit skeptical about Andaras. And then when children start, you know, having all the messages and drawings and sharings, and then the mom, you know, their hearts get to, you know, get open. So a lot of the children are here to support us into awakening. So every time when I hear the mom sharing, it brings me to tears and it really opens my heart. One of the mom came recently, you know, she never got in, she does, she's not into consciousness, she's not into spirituality, but the child, when he saw the picture of Indara, he told the mom, you need to bring this home. I can start hearing it right now, even through a picture. So her mom started getting it in Dara's home. And, you know, he would tell her, you know, where they come from, the different star systems and what they do and how they're interacting. So working with the children through Andara is really beautiful. And I think it's such an honor and a privilege that I, there is a lot of um, children in our area that connect when they that when they connect because it's so pure and they they are the children are pure they don't have all you know all of our they judgments don't have the nails and conditioning and, yeah. and like and we're the ones that did that to them and yes. so the kids that come in now um their nervous systems are actually very different too. their body the physio physiology of their body and how their brains and all that kind of stuff and and so part of part of the neural pathways and part of of the body the neurotransmitters and all that kind of stuff. As we force the children into a linear reality, we're the one that shuts that down in them. So it's really about supporting and listening to and enhancing and, and, and the opening up of that and actually listening to them. Yeah. They yeah. will teach us. Yes. And, and so when we, our hearts open, we're actually becoming little children again. Yeah. And, and, and so it is, it's quite miraculous in the most beautiful way to, to be able to do this with the children. Yeah. It, it's just absolutely beautiful. Go ahead, Shreve. And then the four and a half year old um, is a girl. And um, she loves her mamas and daras. And she would try to steal her mom's and her father's all into her room. She's the one who draws um, unicorns and rainbows. And then she was telling her mom one day, everyone needs to wear an Andara on top of their heart. And then her mom asked her, so why? And then she said, by wearing a crystal heart and Andara on your heart, it opens her heart. So she, and then she said to her mom, everyone, everyone, she have an Andara on their heart and then show it to her mom. And then when I heard that, I just got really touched because I finally understood the whole reason of making pendants. It's not just for beauty, you know, instead of putting it in our bras, like, you know, Laurie, I did that too. <laughs> wow. Now I can <laughs> both sides. And then when people hurt me, they go into the rocks. I know the whole experience. So when you said that, when you share that, I really resonate. But now there is 
a much different purpose. And then the Andara showed me when you put it on the heart, it activates a whole grid. The grid, you know, starts, this is one of the places where the grid started. Heart so when, Yeah. Heart so when the child shared that, you know, there's a different reason for wearing Andaras on our heart. So. Well, and I have like my Moldavite and, and the Andaras and different crystals. And you know, like, for me, I have my Starseed one. And this one is my addiction. It's like the moment it came in, it's like, oh, I never need another. Any. And every day it's like, I have to have. And it's funny because if I take it off, it's like, I have to go get it. Really? And I have to put it back on because it's a massive DNA activation. Our, our linear human doesn't understand DNA activation. And it doesn't understand how any of this works. And it's all vibrational and energetic. And so the, the, you know, having that energy and that vibration and that DNA yeah. is an activation on a DNA level. And so being in proximity is really important. That a lot of people don't understand how proximity works. Well, well if your proximity and what you fill your world with is unconscious, well, it's going to be really hard for you to maintain a higher state of consciousness. Whereas yes. if fill your life with consciousness and high vibe, everything, it's really easy to maintain and sustain. And, and so we don't really understand how, how all this works vibratory and energetically and on a quantum level, you know, and, and how everything is, is that the vibration and the energy of everything is beyond important. All of it is. And we kind of have to be that picky and it has to be a priority. Yeah. Because let's face it, all of us, when we were human, would all of you have thought you would be here right now? Julie. <laughs> <laughs> most of us, we had one, most of this was not within our realm of comprehension. The, the, our scope of, of the ability to comprehend, it just wasn't there. And so besides that, none of us fit, none of this fit into reality. You know, no. I mean, you know, all of our lives have completely, for, for most of us, they go completely different directions. Yeah. I never thought my life would have colors. A couple Color. of years ago, before I met Andaras, I used to wear black. Everything is black in my closet. My house is all beige and white. I have no colors. That's and linear. Then, Mine was after all black, I, beige and white too, by the way. And then after I found Lisa's site, I started stalking her and Dara's page. I would refresh it every 15 minutes to see what comes up. And sometimes when she doesn't post for days, then I get really, you know, stressed out. Why isn't she updating? Always <laughs> waiting for new ones. That's where you want to play. Like, she came here, we went shopping. I'm like, girl, you need, you need colorful clothes. And she's like, and, and, and so, you know, it, taking her to the, oh no, I can't. I'm like, you know, the next thing you know, she's like, I need pink. I mean, I mean, you know, she went from, oh, no, to yeah, that's pink. That's pink. <laughs> I did the same thing. I went to my closet and I got everything out and I, and I basically took it to donation services and donated the whole thing. And then I went and, 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 and at that time I was living on very little and, and I went and I filled my whole closet with color. My bread. It's a part of our awakening process too. You know, it is the color and the vibrancy. Because we lived, look at the metaphor, we lived in black and white world. Beige, blink. Yeah. When you actually start to experience the fifth dimension, it's a whole, the crystals in your eyes and your brain actually transmit so you can actually see all the colors. Yeah. And, and so it's a very colorful experience. And, and you know, the pink skies. Who ever thought we'd have pink clouds and purple, but we saw it in our dreams, didn't we? Yeah. We saw it in our dreams. And when I first, when I, I went back to Sirius, which our consciousness is able to be in all these different locations and places and spaces and dimensions all at the same time. And I'm standing there and it's all pinks and purples, Venusian, pinks, all these colors, you know, that they correlate to all our existences and our, and our highest dimensional realities are full of vibrancy and color and the magical and the mystical. They're not linear in any capacity. Linear is how we learn how to function again in a different way. 
<laughs> that's a whole different part of the ball game because linear actually becomes really hard. The higher we go with our bodies, the harder it is to do anything linear. You have to learn how to oh, do right all of that again in different ways because you're no longer conforming to linear. You're learning how to maneuver all of these different realities in all the different ways and with your body and your sleep and your wake and your food and, and, and everything, every aspect of our lives changes in quite substantially. And so kind of cool. All right. Who wants, thank you, Miss E. That's awesome. For, yes. The kids are very important. And, Can you share something about the yes, kids? Please. So, um, I had been working with, uh, uh, and Dara's for about a year, but I was the hoarder. <laughs> they were mine. <laughs> we all got through it, I know. I was so obsessed, I took care of them. I uh, carried them around in pouches, made sure I didn't crack them or anything, never showed them to other people. I showed them once to one person and she was like, Oh my God, I need this one. Would you sell this one to me? And after that, I was like, no, I'm not showing them to anyone else. <laughs> they are mine. <laughs> and then <laughs> I got more crystals because uh, that's uh, what they wanted. Yeah. And um, I uh, got some Oracle cards. And um, um, after some time, I went to uh, my to the countryside to see my grandparents. And it was Easter, I think, something like that, because everyone was there. My nephews, my nieces, my cousins, everyone was there. And I went to the garden. It was like a secluded place there. And I was like, finally, some peace for me. And I took my crystals out and <laughs> um, made a little grid and, with a, and drew an oracle card. And I was just enjoying my peaceful me time there. And then people started showing up. Everyone came in the end, even the neighbors. I didn't even know uh, they visited us. And apparently they're guests too, because uh, it turned into a full party and we had like five or six kids there and they were playing with the crystals and they were uh, giving them names and identifying colors, both in English and in Romanian, a three-year-old. And people were so shocked and so, wow, how did they know? And blah, blah, blah. And it was... The joy. It's all yeah. about joy. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'd been afraid to show them to anyone. Uh, I feared being judged and, oh, my God. Yeah. Self-misery, by the way. I'm sorry? Self-misery, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at what you feared was the joy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, we're so backwards. It, you know, and so, yeah, it's, it's funny, Lola, that you say that is because um, one of the things, you know, this is all about joy. In my early phases, people would say, Lisa, go back, go to a moment where there was some happiness. And I'm like, I can't find yeah. it. Yeah. That I had mean. to weed and go through all that stuff and, and clear it all for my happy and my joy to come through. Cause I didn't realize it was all buried deep beneath all that stuff, which is a part of the awakening process and stuff too. And, and I'll never forget the moment that I felt that pure peace. I'll never forget the moment that I felt magical inside come through me and went, Oh my God. I was mind blown at yeah. the feeling. Yeah. And, and, and then it's like, this is what you forgot. This is what you disconnected from. This is what you were avoiding and fighting and trying. This beauty, this magnificence, this joy. And then it'll play into everything else like abundance and all the, 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 the immensity of the beauty and the magic and the abundance and all of this stuff that comes forth when our hearts wide open, it is just beyond words. Yeah. 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 And for me, yeah. I have one word, <laughs> Esther. <laughs> when I felt that, <laughs> I, I found a beach 
and there was sea glass everywhere. And I'm like, this feels familiar. What is this? I don't know. <laughs> and then I remembered, oh, Esther with the little rocks and the, and the sea glass and all of that. And all of a sudden, I'm there peaceful and happy, collecting sea glass, <laughs> talking to Esther on the beach. Oh, I love that. See what you started, Esther? Look at that. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> and, and look at how simple. What? Look at the simplicity. You know, that's the one thing that exactly. I understand. You know, it, it's our existence here is very humble. It, it's very pure. It's very simple. It's not complicated. It, but we have to allow ourselves to have the experience again. We, when yeah. we're in that place, it's very simple. Nothing. Nothing's complicated. Nothing's hard. But it's really getting to that place and being able to stay in that place and stay wide open and, and, until that's the space that we, we live from. You know, I was walking around yesterday going, you know, I was looking at, you, you guys know me, I look at everything from 12,000 directions and then I turn around and I write and all that kind of stuff. But I'm looking at the simplicity of the whole thing. People don't understand when, when they come here, I live a very simple life. Very simple. It's not complicated. It's all love. Love is simple. Everything else is what isn't. And it's really starting to understand that when you live from that purity, you live from that love, you live from that place, then the rest of that stuff doesn't really matter anymore. And then what starts to happen is you, you start to choose. This is where the free will comes in. What you want to experience. Is this aligned with love? Is, is this aligned on a soul level? Does this bring you joy? Do you enjoy the actual experience? Are you happy? Does, does it feed your soul? Does it inspire you? Does it incite the most amazing? And, and that's really what we measure our realities by. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it is, does this support all of our existences here as higher consciousness? Does this support what really matters? Does this unite us all as star beings and love beings and light beings and, and all these brilliant aspects that we are? Do, does, it, does it bring forth more of that? Does it unify us all through love? And if it doesn't, then when we're like, no, that isn't okay. Yeah. It's not okay anymore. And, and so that's where everybody starts to decide. This is the beauty of it. Once you feel that yourself, you understand. Up until then, it's like, I'm confused. I don't understand. I don't, and look at where everybody is. I don't get it. <laughs> I've had it for years. I don't get it. That's because <laughs> this won't get it. This is what gets it. And this is what has to open completely up. This is where we have to live from. But, but it's our whole being. It's our whole life. It's not a percentage. It's not like 10% of my life can be this and 90% is going to be the old stuff. That's not how this works. It, it, it's an all in process that, that for a while we have a foot in each world. We have one foot in each dimension. We have one foot and we're teeter tottering on the fence going, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What happens if I let go? <laughs> <laughs> What happens if I let go of all that stuff that doesn't make me happy? You're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's so backwards, <laughs> twisted, inside out, upside down. You know, and a few months ago, I remember saying, every, uh, you have 3D world, 4D world, 5D. We have all these realities that, that, that we describe. But basically, when it's time for us to wake up fully, our whole world turns upside down. And that basically is a flip. Uh, that, that has to occur. And so a lot of people like my whole world just went upside down. Well, that because you're moving into a quantum reality. It's not linear anymore. And, and so I used to call it fruit basket turnover. It's like the whole fruit basket <laughs> just flipped over and all the fruit just went everywhere. <laughs> and it's like my whole life just went boom. Um, and what happens when that happens is that we're each going to recreate our lives through love. We're here to recreate our lives. 
from the purest place inside of us, which is your soul. Your soul's pure. Everything else is your ego. Yeah. Look how much ego there is. But our soul is pure. Nothing hidden. No agendas. No lack. No need. No anything. And, and coming to live from this pure place. Being pure in the things that we do. Being pure. Showing up. Coming through. It's, it's a completely different existence than it was before. Where we function from changes. And, and you can identify it by, you know, we've gone through massive DNA harmonics and, and, and stuff like that. And so now it's all about harmony, living in harmony. And, and, and so it's all rhythmic. It's all about frequencies and tones and, and colors and, and all that kind of stuff. So very cool. I love that. Thank you. It, it, it really helps when, when we actually share some of the challenges we went through and then understanding what they, what they were. But, but you notice how you had to go through it and then you understood? Yeah. Do you notice how while, while you were going, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. Nothing worked? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so frustrated. Why does everybody get it and I don't? I mean, I can say these words too. Why doesn't it mean anything to me? <laughs> Because we actually have to go through it. We have to actually, you know, we talk about surrender a lot of the time and you're basically surrendering. And yesterday I was bringing some other stuff too. You're basically surrendering your ego to your higher self. You're surrendering your old reality for your new one, your dream. You're just, your dreams on a soul level, not a, not your human thing. So it, it's very different. So, but you have to allow the magic to come through. We have to allow ourselves to open up. We have to allow our hearts to open instead of keep, you know, the, the, the protection, the, all, all the old stuff that that's what kept us from these experiences. And, and so we have to believe, we have to believe in magic. Our linear brain goes, oh, there's no such thing as magic. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. I got magic bu bubbling all over the place. And, and so it's, it's actually a very magical experience. And magical, though, is, is normal. Whereas in the beginning, it's like, oh, it's so magical. Now it's like if there's no magic, oh, wait a minute, bring me my oh. magic back. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> uh-oh. You know, it's like, no. Because everything when we're coming, I mean, when we're going through ego construct breaking down and we're going through breaking down programs within ourselves and we're broken, it isn't magical in that moment, but, but we understand how important it is. And so while it's uncomfortable, while we're clearing stuff, um, the, the more we do this, the easier it goes. Do you notice how so much easier now than it was? Yeah. Because now I have, I feel like I have finally a baseline, something to compare everything else with. Before, it was everything was the same. <laughs> That's because this thinks that it controls reality. When, when this actually doesn't, it keeps trying to control, trying to control and stuff. And you actually have to let go of that control in order for everything to come through. So everything's the opposite. And so... We think we have to, if we control it, and, and it's the opposite of that. So, yeah, I know. This is an allowing. This is giving yourself permission. This is a, a self-love. And I want to say this to you. I think it was you, Lola. When you were saying something about the Andaras and, and, and that you just, the obsession and the, the loving them, it's important to understand that that anything that we are allowing ourselves to love that much, it's it's that's our love for ourself coming through. Yeah, that's how it feels. Yeah. So while we say, I loved the Andaras, or anything, doesn't matter, a rock. When it's, it's about the love we feel, it's not about the thing. It's yeah. about feeling that love again. You're not addicted to the Andara. You're addicted to the love that you feel. Yeah. You want the feeling. Because yeah. that's remembering the love that we are. It's just that that thing is what assists you with opening your heart to feel that love, to remember the awesomeness, the amazing yeah. stuff. And so I want to say that it's really important because a lot of people get caught up on the thing. 
when in essence, if you understand that thing is just to support the heart opening, it's just to assist, it's a vibration, it's an energy. It's all about our heart opening fully all the way so we can feel, we protected ourselves from feeling. Yeah. We feared feeling. Yeah. We're like, oh no, that's uncomfortable. Boom. No, bring all that. Up. You got to actually go through the discomfort. Break all that stuff down. Yeah. And so I wanted to say that it was really important because you know me, if I hear something, I'm going to like go there. But, Can I but, share something else? Please do. I've got more now than the... the now you've got more. Of course you do. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> um, on the beach, um, I filled a bag full of random rocks that I liked. And I didn't know why I was putting it in my suitcase and taking it home. But the moment somebody tried to help me with my luggage, <laughs> they were like, this isn't 20 kilos. You're not going to be able to go through the airport with this. And I'm like, good, because I'm not going that route. <laughs> I'm taking the bus. The bus is just fine. So now... I have this uh, bag of rocks from that beach and whenever I see them, they're just rocks from the beach, but I am there on the beach remembering my walks with Esther, who was in Scotland, not on the beach, I was in Bulgaria. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're just rocks, but those things remind me of that uh, portal right. and I keep them around and I look at them because I realized I could go a week, two weeks, a full month without remembering that and going back to, I was like sleeping. And I'm like, no, no. So wherever I went and I found flamingos because they reminded me of that, I got flamingo everything. And I took pictures yeah. and I even got a, a frame, a photo frame with no picture in it, but the background is a flamingo. So it's just an empty <laughs> photo frame with a flamingo <laughs> we do the most crazy stupid stuff that makes no sense to, and and the, the in that moment whatever the obsession is but that that that's what's important because look at what happens and this is where you're using your consciousness that thing is an activation of a level of consciousness that comes yeah. through love that's and the so that's why i say it doesn't matter if it's a freaking rock it doesn't matter what it is it's more understanding what it's about it's about this fully all the way. And it doesn't matter what we use. It really doesn't. For me, you know, it, it can be, it doesn't matter. You know, for me, it's mermaids and, and Natalie is going to be dragons. And for another person, it's going to be this. But I, the thing about it is it's not to a fix of what it is because eventually it's going to be this and this and this and this. And, this, and it's not going to be just one thing. And I might love a mermaid today and tomorrow be full on dragons. You know, and then the next day I have a coffee cup and it says, tomorrow I'm going to be a, a unicorn. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, I sure will be. Because you're in the playful energy, you know, and so all my, all my coffee cups are unicorns and mermaids and, and all these different things. And, and the beauty is which aspect do you want to be today in this moment? Not even the day. You can get up in one moment and be full on. When I go out, I'm mermaid, I'm angel. I'm source consciousness. Um, my ascended me. I'm a little bit of my southern. They're like Lisa. What's what? What's? I hear some southern, and I'm like, yeah, that comes through when I play. I didn't realize I go southern when I start playing again, and it my dialect comes out, and it was gone for years because you speak in light frequencies, and so when I am speaking one way, I speak in light. My voice carries light encodements and it transmits certain frequencies and tones and geometrics and all these things. So the people that actually, they are receiving. But when, when I shift out of that place of teaching and I shift into playful me, then my energy changes and my Southern comes back in and it's like, oh yeah, I can play like a child. And, and so <laughs> it's really understanding you know, we, we play different roles. We enter different modes. It's all different vibrational frequencies. The key is to be able to activate all of those aspects and to become all of those fully. 
here and to clear the distortions and the impurities out and all the stuff from our body because our body has an immense amount of work that it has to go through on a DNA level. But to be able to live any aspect, which aspect would you like to be right now? The, the, it took me years. And here's the thing is that you will be that aspect for a while until your DNA rewrites itself and you become that aspect and then you'll shift to a different aspect. Mm. Eventually you can be any aspect. When I go, I'm all of them. Avatar consciousness, you're every aspect. It doesn't really matter. I can be any aspect that I want to be in any exchange um, energetically. And so if I need to pull my Syrian or God consciousness through and stand in my power because I've got a really strong ego in my presence that's refusing and it's in my reality, it becomes my responsibility. That's what people don't understand. Is if it's in your reality, it's your responsibility. If it's in your reality, it's your program. It's in your body. That's in your reality because that's your vibrational master. There's still something in your body that created that. And when you start to understand, well, if I don't like the reality, then tune to a different vibration, shift to a different energy, look at the reality and decide, well, if you don't like the reality, how are you going to shift and tune and change your vibration and your transmission? Your, and what are you going to do about that thing that you created? Because that physical thing, that being in front of you, that physical reality is materialization. Humans use manifestation, not use that word. Because it's actually physical matter coming into form based upon your level of consciousness. And, and so for us, you understand that physical matter is an energy, a bazillion energies. It is transmission by a transmission of vibrational frequencies and it is relative to your level of consciousness so if you don't like the consciousness of the exchange then change the consciousness of the exchange it's your creation it's your lucid dream it's your illusion you're the one walking around in it what you gonna do and, and it actually becomes if you look at your physical reality as something for you to align for something you to shift and tune that it, it's your consciousness then you actually look at reality very differently than we did before and, and so understanding how are you going to bring that into a higher state of consciousness how are you going to be loved in this exchange how are you going to show people and others how are you going to be the example of what love is if you don't know how to be loved how are you going you can't just say the words <laughs> there's a lot of that but, but that's what a way shower does. That's what a gatekeeper does. That's what a grid keeper does is that you, you are it. It's not out there. It's not that it's yours. It's all of yours. And, it, and it's really about, you know, the, with the 12 D template, it's all about owning it all, becoming totally responsible for it all and realizing that you have the power. We're going to go back to Kim with the, the program. It's your program. It's your play. The whole thing is reprogram your play reprogram it all but if you don't understand what program you have running then you don't get to change the play you don't get to change the program you don't get to rewrite the program you don't get to reprogram anything and so all of this is, is bringing your abilities forth everything you forgot that you have the capability to do but in order to have the capability everybody's capable but your heart has to be open for that so our human aspect, oh, I can't, and I can't do this, I don't have this, and that's all excuses. Because technically, if your heart opens, you can and you do and you will. If your heart opens, you don't have the excuses anymore. And if your heart opens, you will reconnect to that place inside of you where you understand. You will replay, you will reconnect with that place inside of you that gets it. That place inside of you that cares, that place inside of you that will step up, step forth, do. It doesn't really matter, it's just words, but it's really understanding this whole thing is about your deep inner sacred connection in your reality. And everything we talk about, even crystals or andaras or rocks or trees or stuffed unicorns and mermaids, it's all a part of an activation it's all a part of an experience that can be magical if that's if your priority is to have a magical existence guess what's going to happen you find another that's what happens <laughs> I hear somebody. 
that's how my <laughs> thing started. It was, I don't know, 7 a.m. December, something cold outside. I was very unhappy. I was preparing to go to work. And uh, my Facebook addiction showed me something really interesting. And Andara, and I was like, ooh, I want to go to work. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm happy at 7 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Very cool. Well, does anybody have anything you want? I want to say thank you to you guys for, for just coming and sharing and opening up and, and really just, you know, sharing that it doesn't matter how. Yeah, I have a saying, if you care, it doesn't really matter. If you care, you'll figure it out. If you care, it'll come to you. If you care, all you got to do is open up. And, and so um, you don't have to understand any of this because inside you already know. Inside, you already have it all. It, it's really about try, to stop trying to understand it all and opening up and allowing yourself to feel everything. And, and so let go of all the rules of how everything you think everything's supposed to be open up to believing is something magical believing that the most amazing believe if you don't believe how's it gonna be and um, it's about holding it and accessing it go ahead sweetheart i just wanted to share about um the fairies like yes! from your, I, I forgot I'm, the fairies I'm very connected with the fairies and the unicorns and they always come together for me. And I started seeing them with my physical eyes mm -hmm. some years ago. And I was on the phone with a, a girlfriend and I'm laying in my bed and all of a sudden I just see, I just see these little things moving so quickly. And I was like, oh, my God, what is that? Yep. I think I just saw a fairy. And they just, that's when they just started. It opened up for me. And I had to share because it's magical. It is. It's just magical. And then I, I started seeing the unicorns. Uh, they lived in a field out by my house. <laughs> and of course, sometimes they would come in, and and then I started making the little fairy circles outside with the crystals, and I mean, it's, it's just amazing, and they were all connected with my crystal grids that I was Magical making. Magical and the mystical, yes. And, you know, it's just something that you, your linear mind would never think is possible, and then all of a sudden, you know, you open your heart more and more and boom, there they are. Yeah. I get to see them now. Yeah. Well, and you reminded me when I first started waking up to all this magical, mystical, weird stuff, I was really linear. And, and so this didn't fit into reality for me and stuff, but I found myself just completely mesmerized and obsessed with fairies. I actually went and bought a dragon and fairy tattoo book. I was designing my own tattoo. It was gonna be a fairy and my son, I'm like, will you do my tattoo? And you know, we have this whole thing going on. And, and I didn't, you know, I had this obsession. I would sit online all day long and look at pictures of fairies, fairies with wings and you get into mayor fairies and then they all, then I graduated to fairies that glitter and sparkled. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like an obsession and it was so funny because one of my names I renamed you rename yourself we were talking about that earlier as you change names a lot and you take on different names as you're activating that aspect and, and so you, everything um one of my nicknames was glitter fairy and, and so now that you say that I forgot about that part. My, mine was crystal fairy <laughs> crystal fairy <laughs> yep. I, I couldn't decide between Crystal Fairy and Divine Warrior Goddess because it was Crystal Fairy Goddess. And that was my uh, YouTube channel, the mm -hmm. first name. And then I just felt like I had to do the other one. But in my heart, I'm still both. <laughs> yeah, you always will. 
Well, and, and, and you, you reminded me that when I first started my awakening process, I became obsessed with fairies and, and stuff. And then, um, you know, you move from the different things. Oh, but, and the certification. Oh, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm a certified fairyologist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have to talk about that for a moment, just because we were so hilarious. Fairyologist. Did yes. I give you that certificate? I'm laughing. No. no. <laughs> I know. We had this conversation yesterday. So here's this thing about certificates. And so the linear mind seeks a certificate because it basically gives us the courage, or we have this piece of paper in our hand going, oh, I'm certified. And all of a sudden, that makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. Make but, but a lot of us on a linear what will bring us into some of this is we're seeking certificates and we'll take the classes and all that kind of stuff. Eventually you start to realize the certificate's a bunch of paper and it doesn't really matter anymore. No. And, and so we were, we were laughing because I stopped doing, in the beginning I did certificates because I understood that that's what the human aspect was seeking. Right. And, and people would actually pay for a class if it had a certificate, but if it didn't have a certificate for some reason it was unworthy. And so you have this whole game plan that goes on. And so we started laughing yesterday because uh, at, at one point I had a girl here with me and we were talking one day and I'm like, you know what? Because once you ascend, you become an ascended master, but it's not an ego ascended master. It, it, it's an ascended state of consciousness where you're mastering your reality through love. It, it's not a title. It, it, it's a reminding each other of who we, who we are. We are this. It, it, it's, a, it's a being. It's not an ego thing. You don't walk around going, I'm going to send a master. That's all ego. Nobody cares. <laughs> you know, I, it took me a year and a half to, to get to the point where I could even say the words because I was so worried about coming from my ego and being misperceived. And then one day my universe is like, you have to say it because you can't empower somebody else if you can't even say the words. I'm like, oh, that's how that works. But, but we started laughing because it, it was like, you know, we'll, we'll just give a certificate out for, for those. And... and <laughs> We will certify them as masters and, and it will be their master's degree for, for what they already are. Yeah. So, so our certificates were going to be as a master's degree being what you already are. We're not really teaching anything. All we're doing is assisting you with finding where it is through your own heart. And so it became comical of seeking a certificate because because the linear human will go i need a certificate or the certificate validates who i am or it says that i have more knowledge than somebody else or i'm more important and you get into this whole linear game when in essence it's a freaking piece of paper but well i think human, i ahead. think another purpose that they serve is they give you confidence well, and that's what I was going to say For, they give us confidence we have a piece of piece of paper saying i'm worthy yeah yeah. But, but I had 19 Reiki certificates and didn't still feel wor worthy, okay? Until uh, I, yeah, I, know. I don't care anymore and I went yeah. all in. And then I didn't need the certificates anymore. They didn't mean anything to me. But, but I, you know, it was so funny because I became responsible for issuing the certificates and I'd look at my teacher and go, can I have another one? <laughs> She's like, I don't care, Lisa, make yourself. I'm like, okay, I want another make one. Make one up. <laughs> I'm like, sure, I want to do the certificates because I want to do, I attended the class again. Can I have another one? For some reason, <laughs> it, it mattered to me that I had 19 certificates for the same stupid course. Really? <laughs> we have no, but, but yes, it does. It gives us confidence in, in basically trusting what we know because what we know doesn't conform to the old. What we know, on a human level, we seek validation. Mm -hmm. We're in essence, we don't need to be validated for what's pure. We don't need to be validated for, for what is love consciousness and what unity consciousness is. But on a human level, we are seeking that. And so it's really everybody, you know, you don't know how many people, and I did it in the beginning too, it is, you know, I'm going through this. Is anybody else going through this? Well, when 12 other people go, yes, I'm going, oh, good. Well, what does it, if you're going through it, it's yours. But, but, you know, our, our, our human aspect, especially when we start going through the DNA rewrites or, you know, I just got knocked. When I started writing, people were flat out. People were like, oh, thank God for saying that. We're all flat out too. 
Well, nobody would admit we're all laid flat out. Yeah, we are laid flat out. It's a part of the process. But because it doesn't fit into the human reality, we're questioning it. Well, is, is this normal? Is this right? Is this wrong? Am I supposed to be sleeping? Oh, and, me, I get, and we have this whole thing that we have going on inside of this perception of how everything is supposed to be. Multidimensionality doesn't fit into any of that. None of it. None. It doesn't matter what you think this is going to be like. It's not going to be like this. You know, I had a guy years ago, and he had been working with me for like years. But when he went through his actual experience, he's like, Lisa, I could not have understood. All these years of working with you, I didn't get it. My experience was nothing that I could have perceived. There's no comprehension level until you actually go through it which is why it's so important to be really present within the experience and, and really trust and listen, you know, establish that universal connection, that inner connection, that deep sacred connection inside of you and trust that no matter what. And, and I tell everybody, <clears throat> it's not that you can't trust that, it's that you can't trust yourself. Mm -hmm. right. On an ego level, you can't be trusted. This, your universe, your higher self is looking out for you. It's trying to make things easy for you. It's your ego that keeps getting in the way. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's you that says, oh, I don't know if I can do what's honorable and respectful. And I need, you know, I need to do it the old way because it's safe, you know, and so you have all this stuff that goes on. So it's really important in understanding that if we just get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way, open your heart, get out of your own way. It's really important, and that's a part of what all of this stuff does. This whole thing is about getting every person's heart wide open all of the way, all the way, to where everybody comes from is that purest, the most beautiful and magnificent, and it's a deeply sacred and respectful. It's respect. It's respect for yourself. It's respect for each other. It's caring on a deeper level that, that we don't have access to, to until we actually find that place inside of ourselves. To, to love ourselves completely, to respect ourselves completely and how we show up in our lives each day and how we contribute and how we share and how much we care about each other. That's where our respect comes from. And, and so it's really understanding that, that everything that we're talking about today is just bringing everybody back into their highest states of consciousness that everybody fell from, everybody disconnected from, everybody forgot. It, it doesn't matter what word we use. We either live from this place, fully, deeply connected, or we don't. The question is, how do you get there? How do you open that all up? How do you let go of all the belief systems and the mentalities and the limits and the conditionings and the programming and learn how to reprogram yourself? <laughs> like a crystal. <laughs> like a crystal. Exactly. Talking about crystal, may I ask you something? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, why sometimes I have to, again, to do a grid, uh, to create a grid in the garden? At a very special place, it's not at a very special place, <laughs> but I don't know why. I have to make, I know I have to make it, so I, I do it, and then I have to stand in the middle of it. The portal. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, okay. The, the neighbor. Portal. <laughs> it's a portal. Yeah. Oh. It's a portal, it's a gateway, and, and when you're creating in that space, that, that place holds a certain vibration that when you create right there's there, a very special place I, that one i not <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's you know we have when i first started going out in nature and i started walking through dimensional portals i mean it was like an obvious like <laughs> and, and, and mm -hmm. you know i had these weird experiences and stuff and there are certain places out in nature that carry certain vibrations that when you go stand in that place eventually be everywhere you go but you know i had this one place i was walking around the lake and it's like take a right and go off into the trees. Mm. Well, that didn't make any logical sense. And, and so it's like, okay. And, and the moment I stepped through these three trees that made a triangle, mm. boom, 
I could feel it. And all of a sudden I was actually standing in a completely different dimension. People were walking right by me and couldn't see me anymore. Oh, they had no clue I was standing there. I was like on the other side of in Narnia or something mm. looking through this portal. And, and it be, created this plasmic experience that you could see like the sheath between the, and, and it, it's a very weird experience when you start actually walking through portals mm. in your physical reality. And, and actually when you start walking through all of these portals, it, it's in order to do that, we have to start, you know, in order for me to start activating, that the portals are inside of the body. Well, in order to get the portals inside of the body open so that the actual portals open up in your physical reality so that you can actually walk through them, then for you going and creating the portal is reconnecting you with the magnetics, the energetics, the grid work. And so you're creating the portal by doing this grid. When we do grids, we're creating geometrics. Mm -hmm. That every time... So let's say you make a beautiful grid or you, you know, I used to go to people's houses and create portals in their house because I can do it with energy. Mm -hmm. and, and I would tell people anytime you need to reconnect, just come stand in this place. And what was funny was when they would step out of that, they're like, oh my God, Lisa, but the energy mm -hmm. and they would step in and, and, and then they would step out. The, the things that we can do are, are just absolutely amazing and they're so simple when you reconnect, well, all the portals and all the access and all the information and the ability, this is everybody remembering how to do this. And mm -hmm. so every time you do it, you're remembering. Mm -hmm. But we don't understand that's what we're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't understand why. <laughs> that's because your know. soul is yeah. telling you to go do something that your human doesn't comprehend yeah. because in order to activate portals, in order to open up portals, in order to create portals that we actually walk through. Mm -hmm. They open up inside of us. When you go do what your soul, you're basically what you're doing is surrendering your human to your higher self soul. And you're actually following the instruction the, the directions mm -hmm. that it's giving you, which is a surrendered state. That's how we have to live our life here. Okay. Our every moment is our higher self, our universal aspects of ourself directing our human and telling it what to do and, and our human aspect do it. Eventually, we just merge into one and there's nobody telling us anymore. It's like you get this knowledge, this feeling, this inspiration. It's like you just need to get up and go do this. And that's kind of what you're yeah. doing, right? Yeah, yeah, I have to. Mm. It, it, but and, but and sometimes it's, a, it's on a special date, like 21 of June, 20. 20 or 21 of September always yeah. special day that happens dates. I used to get dates all the time the other day I got the date of January 22nd well and, and, and the whole day was like full on mm. everything and I thought oh cool you know you'll get that I used to get dates in advance all the time but you never know what's going to happen and on that date great great in the garden <laughs> yeah. when I go take the date, date. <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing it because what happens, and this is what I tell everybody, which aspect are you being right now? So when you feel, go create a grid and you get up and you go create the grid, you're being your, your higher self soul aspect. Mm -hmm. You're not letting your human doubt or your human programming or your human stuff get in the way. In that moment that you honor what you feel, Mm -hmm. then, then in that moment you are listening and receptive and in tune and you're actually doing what what's highest to line instead of what your your human aspect understands or wants or thinks or, or any of that kind of stuff and so a lot of people I tell them which aspect are you being are you being right now you have to know the difference between your human ego aspect and your higher self or your soul or your star being or your galactic otherwise you don't know which you is present you don't know what you're listening to, you know, and, and your the ego aspect carries doubt, carries blame, carries shame, carries guilt, carries all this stuff that's got to be cleared from within our body. It's just programs. That's all it is. It is programs held on a cellular level and more. But when, when you feel to get up and go create a grid, that actually you're creating a portal 
that is actually going to raise your vibration and actually start rewriting your DNA consciousness. Mm -hmm. The DNA activation, it's many things. It's not just one thing. It's really important that you honor. It's really important for all of us that we honor the weird and the bizarre. Mm -hmm. Multidimensionality is weird and bizarre at first. Now, I will tell you this. After you live as a multidimensional, you'll look at everything else and go, well, they're weird and bizarre. And you'll be talking about the human ego. They're weird and bizarre. All of a sudden, your whole reality changed. And we're not weird and bizarre anymore. We're normal. I know it flips. All of a sudden, everything you used to judge, you become it. And then you look at the limits and the conditions and the lack and the programming and all the stuff and you're, and you're mind blown. And you're going, oh, that's not real. That's not reality. And, and, and so our whole reality, but what happens is, is it's called transitioning. You transition from one reality to the next. You transition from old earth to new earth realities. Your new earth realities are more magical and amazing, but they're not bound by linear constructs and perceptions anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what happens is your reality inside changes. And what's real for you constantly changes too. And so today, in this moment, you might look at something and go, yeah, that's my reality. In the next minute, 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 not even a word, moment, minute, minute. In the next moment, you might have this awareness going, wait a minute, that's not aligned. In one split second, you go, that's not my reality anymore. Mm -hmm. What we don't understand on a consciousness level is that your reality is going to change in every nanosecond. Because what's aligned on a soul level dictates your reality. Not what you thought reality was. Reality is no longer going to be any of that old stuff anymore. Reality is going to be what you bring forth from within you, what's aligned through purity and through love. That's what reality, my reality, everything in my life is aligned through love. Everything in my life is this. When something comes into my reality isn't this, then I have to decide. And, and so to understand our reality is going to change constantly. When you understand reality is your perception. Reality is what you believe. Reality is what you feed your energy into. Reality is what you create. Reality is the words you keep saying over and over and over again that create a mentality and a, and a perspective of something that, that you believe that's it. When you change your perception of things when you shift your vibration, when those light encodements inside of our bodies activate and your consciousness expands, none of that is reality anymore. It's a whole new earth. It's a whole new reality that has, that looks nothing like the old reality, which scares the human aspect to death. It's supposed to. So, that Nathalie, the, 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 the long answer to the short question, the short question to the long answer, whatever the case may be. <laughs> Y'all know me. You ask something, it's going all the way around the world, and then it'll come <laughs> back around again. And Because this is a geometric quantum reality. We don't live in linear anything. It's all vibrational. When you're shown to get up and go do that, it's a surrendering of your ego, ego aspect and trusting. It's, a, it's your DNA activating higher consciousness dna it's a part of your soul body but it's also a part of being able to open the portals inside by creating the portal is through geometrics is through energetics is through everything that we don't linearly comprehend or understand at the time mm -hmm. and it's through the experience we actually have to have an experience and so by you doing this you're creating the experience notice what happens once you do it and you stand in that the energy and the way you feel mm -hmm. that's an activation of a higher state of consciousness that's an opening of portals to higher dimensional realms yeah it's sometimes sometimes my higher self tells me to to connect to the cosmic sun and then to the center of gaia through the portal mm. Funny. So I'm going to say this to you so you can understand and everybody listening can understand. In that moment when your higher self tells you, tells your human aspect of you, it's instructing your ego. 
is teaching you. Mm. So when we say my higher self tells me, what we don't comprehend is technically your higher self is teaching you. Mm -hmm. But you're referring to, so if I looked at you and said, Natalie, which aspect of you, when you say tells me you're in this moment identifying with your ego aspect. Yeah. But it's important to understand that mm -hmm. because your ego isn't who you are. Your higher self is who you are. Mm -hmm. But in order to become your higher self, your, your, your higher self has to teach your ego. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, you know, we, we don't really comprehend what's really going on. You know, it takes us years and years and years of doing this over and over and over because we're basically penetrating or breaking through those six skulls we had to become crystal skulls. <laughs> And, and here, but it's what happens is in that moment, you're, you're surrendering your ego to your higher self and it's teaching you how to have a vibrational, energetic experience that isn't linear. Opening portals isn't a linear thing. It's all vibrational and, and with your energy and your heart wide open and you fully surrendered and in tune through mm -hmm. a level of consciousness. So it's actually bringing you into a different level of consciousness. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and I'll share this just because one day we were driving down the road and all of a sudden my heart went, Ooh. And, and, and so we talk about the gateways and stargates and all that kind of stuff. Well, your heart is a stargate. And, and so when, when your heart opens, you go, oh, portals just opened. And, you know, like the other day I'm running around, I'm going, oh, rainbow frequency just started. There's going to be a rainbow. And it took two hours. I'm like, come on, rainbow. You know, two hours. Come on, rainbow. And I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm like, I'll post it for you when it appears. Took two hours, but there it is. <laughs> you know, I can hear, they, they kicked in just a little while away, by the way. You can hear all the frequencies and everything. But, but in order for us to tune in through our consciousness, we have to let go of all the linear ways. And it, so it's a full-on experience. But, um... rainbow frequencies all these different frequencies and, and different levels of consciousness is if you will they activate inside of us and, and and they activate while we're doing those weird and bizarre things that don't make linear logical sense and and so it, it's a part of the process for all of us mm. to, to learn to listen and take guidance and the way i used to describe it is that our our masculine energy you know how we used to say, well, men don't like to ask for directions. And this isn't about male or female, but I have to use this for an example right now. Men don't like to ask for directions. The women will be going, oh, stop and ask for direction. Men go, no, I'm not asking for directions. You know, it's the same thing with your ego as your masculine energy. It doesn't like to take direction. Whereas your higher self is sitting here trying to give you instructions and your ego is going, no, I don't want to be told what to do. I want it my way. This is the exact same. When I started understanding the reason we channel is to open up to instructions and directions because we won't listen any other way. And it's just a part of accessing your higher state of consciousness to become that higher state of consciousness while your DNA rewrites itself. Mm. And DNA re is breaking down the linear constructs. That's why, you know, when you go to sleep, your body is moving from a linear to a nonlinear state of consciousness. When your body's laying down and you're weak, when photonic light, which actually feels like a really heavy drug, which actually kicks in the lucid dreaming stuff and, and all these other things. I told you I wasn't going to teach. Okay, hold on. I know I did it again, didn't I? Okay, so anyway. I have to catch myself. It's my natural way. I have to start breaking myself, you know, and, and okay. <laughs> the whole process of moving from a linear to a nonlinear existence is learning to let go of the mentality of what reality was. Mm -hmm. The fifth dimension you get here by, by walking through portals, literally but the portals of your heart opening up, crossing the rainbow bridge. At first, everything's metaphoric, and then it becomes an actual experience, and you're living metaphors. Mm. And, and so when we're doing these things, I'm going to stick my tongue at Lola. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to share something. Go ahead. I moved back home, and uh, some time after, 
uh, somebody told me they, they're building a new bridge that has been in projects for years, but now they're, they're just starting it when I moved back. I'm like, that's an interesting metaphor. <laughs> yep, building the bridge, yeah. We, we, we live metaphors for a long time. You go look up the spiritual meaning of everything and we move out of being spiritual into consciousness. They, they are different things. And, but we have to go through one process to, to, to activate the other part of the process and stuff for a lot of us. So it's really about getting about, out of the judgment about the whole thing. And, and so Nathalie and anybody, all of this is about a completely different existence that's energetic. New Earth is an energetic existence. That, that becomes physically real based upon the energy we hold. So in order to activate that energy and hold that energy, and then, so, so like the entire new earth experience is energetic. It's about the energy. It's a quantum existence where you study and you see the energy of everything. Opening portals is an energetic thing. It's not a linear thing but your heart has to be wide open and your whole body's got to be involved in the process. You don't get to have a new earth reality without a full on experience that, that doesn't have anything to do with the linear constructs of anything mm -hmm. at all. And so now I'm going to flip this on Nathalie. When you ask me, what is this? If I say to you, close your eyes for a minute, and tune in with your consciousness, tune in with all of you. You tell me. Close your eyes. <laughs> I mean, keep your eyes open and do this part. <laughs> Feel. It's going to be a very simple, and it's not, the head complicates the whole thing. Connection. What does your heart consciousness say? Connection. Mm -hmm. When you're doing these grids, it, it, it's assisting you with making a connection, right? That's mm -hmm. what this whole thing is about, it is connection. It, it's reconnecting, remembering, mm -hmm. in a deep inner sacred connection. So while you're asking me, you don't really have to ask me, but I but, know uh, you asked me because everybody needed to hear all that mess. But technically, if everybody, anytime you have a question, close your eyes and go inside and get really quiet and just allow yourself to be and just ask. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it starts out as the subtle realm. So it's really silent. It's really, cause you actually have to try to hear. Yeah. Not try, but allow yourself to listen and hear to the subtleties and stuff. And eventually that subtlety becomes really loud and you'll be able to hear it all the time because you're tuning in. So it's really about tuning in with your consciousness and asking what is this and believing the weird and bizarre stuff. Mm -hmm. That's how I started accessing the multiple dimensions was by believing the weird, bizarre things that made no sense. I didn't study any of this stuff. Now, granted, we do study, we read books, we do all that stuff, because which is just an activation. But as far as when it came to doing any of this stuff, all of this is stuff that, that I remembered through me that came from inside of me. And it was all weird and bizarre stuff. And I had to get over all the judgment. When I'm sitting in the middle of my floor with color magic markers and, and big sheets of white poster board and I'm scribbling out in, in sacred geometry and I'm writing in quantum physics and I, my human is going, I don't understand what any of this stuff is, but all of a sudden you open up all these portals inside to this vast knowledge. Mm. And all of a sudden it's just like flooding and, and you get it, but not on a human level. It's the language of our soul. It's the language of our higher selves. It's the language of our galactic and all these other aspects of ourselves coming through us. And so opening up, and it's all done, at first it's done through just opening portals. And by you creating an external portal, the inner portal is activated. That's why the external is so important for some people is the external is necessary because the more linear we are, the more we actually need a physical experience to get it. Mm -hmm. And so after a while, you, you go, oh, I don't need to go. I can just sit here and open a portal up inside. 
but but it's it's the practice of doing it to where you understand the feeling and so when you're standing in the portal and you and it's that feeling and that energy go oh okay that connection again mm. So tomorrow you might be sitting on the toilet and go, I think I'm going to order, I'm going to open a portal right here on my toilet. And you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> believe me, the dimensional shifts we have when we're in the bathroom and be like everything. <laughs> it, it becomes quite comical and stuff like that. So the only reason I'm saying, saying that to you, Natalie, is, is that um, the whole experience of transitioning from 3D to 5D. And then we go so far beyond 5D is the beginning for everybody. 5D is where we rebirth ourselves into as an innocent child. And then we have to learn everything all over again, literally in every capacity and our body. It, it, it's, it's the light body takes over and, and it now runs your life. Literally ask anybody here, what happens when your light body kicks in? Your whole world, everything goes. <laughs> Be like, oh, I'm going to bed right now. When your light body says, I want this food. Oh, yes. Go? Peanuts, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and every phase of the light body has a different food. And so, so it, I've been um, living on, my body tells me what it needs. And yeah, then you'll understand it later. Because, because this isn't linear logical. With activation of pineal gland, it became dark chocolate. You know, there's different foods that do different things. The last month and a half, my body says grilled cheese sandwiches, 24 hours a freaking day. I'm like, really? My body can't tolerate cheese. Well, guess what? It does. Mm. And, and now my body needs it for the phase that I'm in. When we got through a couple days ago, all of a sudden my body's like, you're done. Now it's fresh, live green, right? Not all I want is fresh. And, and it's like straight to the store. I need green, 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 green. And, and your body will tell you what it needs for the process it's in. Yeah, it does. And it'll change 24 hours a day. It'll change one moment. And when cosmic rays kick in, whatever you eat, your body's going to reject. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nausea. <laughs> Nausea is a part of the morning sickness that comes with birth in your new realities, by the way. Mm. Lots, of, lots of weird and bizarre stuff. But it's also a part of the cosmic rays. And cosmic rays and some of these other frequencies, they work through your body and they start obliterating the old programs literally and and so you know quantum jumping is a, is a how much light you hold thing mm. we quantum jump through realities based upon the amount of photonic light we hold and so quantum jumping becomes a 24 hours it, it's how we live our life we jump 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 24 hours a day we are quantum moving through realities all of the time but our human aspect doesn't have this capability it's really about tuning into the light being fully in service to the light from inside of you. And the light is you. It's the light of your soul. And, and, and so a lot of the times I used to wake up and the words were just lay in the light. And you just lay there in your little pod. And your body's going through massive upgrades and you'll be going, I can't do nothing. With it. And the beauty is you get to travel through your consciousness, your DNA, through photonic light, and you get to go do a bunch of stuff and you're clearing timelines and you know, we have the most majoring and the magical, weird, bizarre realities that don't fit into anything people call reality here. But all along the way, what will happen is your lives will become very simple. Mm -hmm. And in that simplicity is the beauty and the magic and the amazingness. And, and so it's really about simplifying. A lot of people become minimalist for a really t long time. And then anything that we get serves higher purposes. Anything we bring in is vibrational. Mm -hmm. everything in our life is vibrational from that point forward. Everything has a vibrational purpose or, or we don't have it in our world, period. And, and so everything is very different here. It's, it's, it's a completely vibrational existence. The whole thing is. And on a human level, we can't hear, see, feel vibrations unless, oh, I don't like that. In the beginning, the way you understand vibrations is you don't like that. It's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. And that's actually a, a lot of us in the beginning, we're like, you know, this is how you start to determine vibrationally because we can't tell the difference between the different vibrations. And we don't have the capability at that point to dictate vibrational realities. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's all a part of the process. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
good. Cute. <laughs> yes. And I wait that one hour. I don't know how many hours we've been going, a couple hours and stuff like that. I want to say thank you to all you guys. If you have anything else you want to say, Anna, thank you guys. I love you tremendously. I really appreciate you guys showing up for everybody viewing. Each one of everybody has contributed, or, or mostly everybody, I don't know. We'll find out after the fact. Um, contributed a free gift that is an activation of some sorts. Some, you, you just, by viewing it, by bringing it into your consciousness or presence and tuning into it, it is the activation. It don't, don't complicate all this stuff. Make it really easy. Just really presence and connected is how all this works. And so all of, all of these gifts will be yours to go grab. Um, we're, I think we're all providing either some are providing Dropbox links or I'll put them up for you guys and you go grab them. There's activation galleries and, and you, the inspiration to inspire you to get creative, inspire you to get out there and throw the rule books out and just start doing. And it takes practice in the beginning because you're kind of breaking through the linear constructs of I can't create. The linear constructs of it has to be a certain way. The linear con constructs of all the judgment and all that kind of stuff. And it's really about just throwing out and don't, don't care. You don't care. Just, just do what makes, brings you joy. Just do what is fun. Just do what you love. And the beauty is when you love it, other people will love it that resonate with that vibration and that frequency too. You're, you're going to, these things will inspire others. So when I started seeing all you guys and you're doing these beautiful things and I'm like, Oh, we have to share this <laughs> with a lot of other people. Cause it's so awesome. And it's so inspiring. The beauty was none of us really comprehended the vastness and the difference of all of our stuff. And so when we started putting it all together, it turned into this completely beautiful, amazing and i was blown away at how all the different the energy and all that kind of stuff and how different and how awesome everything was how some was really simple the elegance of some others brought in you know nature you know and stuff like that and and so it's really cool to see how vast and simple and easy when we just when we just create 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 and so what we did was we brought together a compilation a creation we brought together in all of this everything is an activation once we start opening up to all of this activation of higher consciousness activation of feeling activation of reconnection activation of all these things activation of getting our heart open if you'll allow yourself so we'll have the website page set up everybody will be sharing once we get all the videos and stuff they'll be sharing them for everybody where they feel appropriate it'll be made available for everybody and use it as an activation for those the children or have you know have the gift of children for those who have the gift of others in their lives that you enjoy doing this make it a group event you guys get together create 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 inspire get out in nature it's really important so but most of all Play and have some fun. Really let go and just enjoy and let go of all of the constructs of how anything needs to be. And don't get caught up in words, okay? Let go of all that stuff. When, when we speak, the words have messages. When we speak, the words have purpose. When we speak, they are, are to communicate vibration, and energy, and all that kind of stuff. It's not about the words. It's not what it's called. Doesn't matter move beyond all that stuff and just tune in to the way it makes you feel. And if it's not for you, that's okay. For somebody else, it might be. It's really about letting go of all the judgment. We all don't do this the same way at the same time because it's vibrational. And while I might love one thing, somebody else goes, no, I don't care about that. Okay. This is what inspires me. This is what opens my heart. The next day they wake up and go, oh, I'm full on this and I don't care about that anymore. And so you're going to move through all these different things constantly. Allow what you feel, the beauty, the, the, the interconnected, and, and just trust and listen. And, and it, it's about getting into divine flow and a divine connection and that sacred place and really just tuning in energetically and living from that space.
Thank you guys. I love you tremendously. I really, really appreciate you guys for joining and all of us doing this together. And we'll put it out. You guys have a blast. And we look forward to more amazing New Earth Awesome everything together. We love you. Thank you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you guys. You.